The main character's name is Diaz. He is already quite an adult man, dressed in powerful and heavy armor. The man was holding a heavy weapon in his hands. He thought that this magnificent plane, which could not be grasped by the eyes, was now his personal territory however, this plane was only solid grass. Once upon a time, the main character's mother told him to be a person who protects the people he cares about. These same words were her last wish. The man's father told him to be human and protect those who are weaker than him. In order not to discredit the honor of the hero's parents, who died when he was young, he followed their wishes. With a longing soul, he left them. When he was 15 years old, the war with neighboring countries began. Following the wishes of his parents and for the sake of protecting others, he volunteered. This war lasted for 20 long years. In the fire of war, the man turned 35 years old. At that time, a peace treaty was concluded with the warring country and the cessation of the offensive was announced, the moment came when everyone could rest. The man was somehow even awarded the title of hero. This was probably due to the man's skills in war and the recording in which he differed from others. His majesty praised him for his victories and what he deserved. He awarded the main character the title of feudal lord and announced the allocation of his own feudal territory to him. The man was illiterate, whose value was only in the war. He didn't understand why it was all given only to him. However, in the end, it was explained to him that his goal would be to protect his lands and people, as well as collect taxes for the kingdom. The first move was to visit his new lands, so Diaz reluctantly packed up what was in the cart and headed for his new land. He had almost no time to prepare for the trip before he left the capital. Besides, the official was watching him all the time. Finally, someone's voice was heard, and the cart stopped. Diaz thought that they must have finally arrived at his land. The man got out of the leashes and thought that they had reached the center and stopped. The official began to show the boundaries of the territory. Diaz was very surprised. All he sees in front of him is a vast grassy plain, so basically his territory is a plain. The official said it was a suitable place for someone like a man. He can do what he can now. The man started looking at the papers and said that the plane was called Neutros, and the man was called Diaz. Starting today, the man's name is Diaz Neutros. After a while, Diaz went to the stream to drink water. Diaz drank some water and exhaled. He said that, fortunately, there is a source of clean water here. In the war, he could only do with dirty and muddy water. He had walked quite a long way and still hadn't seen a single tree. He decides to try the herb because he is wondering if it is a healthy herb. No wonder, but it's just terrible. He lies down on the grass and thinks that tomorrow he will think about everything. We need to find a way to avoid death. He decides to stay here for two more days, leave this plane and leave because he can help someone, and then he will be able to fulfill the wishes of his parents. Suddenly, someone approached the man and asked him who he was. Diaz was sleeping soundly, but suddenly a stranger kicked him to wake up. Diaz wakes up and sees in front of him a young girl who had a long horn right in her forehead. Diaz was surprised to see a man. He didn't understand what race he was, and then he saw the horn on her head. The girl repeated it, asking Diaz what he was doing here. The man wakes up and says that his name is Diaz, and as the girl sees, he slept in this place. The girl asked the man why he was sleeping in this place. Diaz replied that he had nowhere else to sleep. The girl asked why the man came to this plane. Diaz replied that he was told to live here. The girl asked if the man was really that stupid. Diaz replied that he couldn't deny it, but it was his home now. The girl asked the man what the man's purpose was here. Diaz said that if it comes to that, then his goal is not to die. The girl started to take out her bow, and then the man shouted, and then asked the girl to wait and stop. The girl replied that if he wanted to live, he had to tell the truth. Diaz replied that he was telling the truth. Although if this was not enough for the girl, then his goal is to fulfill the last wishes of his parents and help others. To protect those who are weaker than him, and this is his goal in life. The girl asked the man why he was lying. 
Diaz replied that he had no reason to lie to her. The girl screamed and asked if the man was a friend or an enemy. Diaz thought that he was not sure what the girl wanted from him and whether she really wanted to hear the answer. The man asked if he could answer that he was neither a friend nor an enemy. The girl replied that the man should choose. Diaz didn't understand why she was so eager for his answer. He tried to understand that this is his land and since it stands on his land, it is his man. He also thought that this young lady would gossip about him and his job as a feudal lord. Diaz abruptly stands up and shouts that he declares himself a friend of the girl and a defender. No matter who stands in front of her, he is not her enemy, so he will protect her. Suddenly, the horn on the girl's head begins to glow very brightly. Diaz was surprised, but the girl herself does not understand what kind of light it is and why the horn is enveloped in blue flames. Then the blue flame disappeared. The girl said it was just a mistake and it couldn't be. Then she grabs Diaz by the arm and runs with him to the side. The man asked the girl to stop and then asked where she was running and what she was doing. The girl said that she would take the man to her village so he should just follow her. Diaz was very surprised that there was a village on this plane. After a while, they arrive at the village. All the residents were very surprised. They watched the newcomers closely. Diaz thought about the fact that he had followed the girl until the evening. As a result, they reached the village and he had never seen such a beautiful village. Now the man is being led to the village chief. After a while, the heroes arrive at the chief's house. The man said that he sees that Aruna has brought a stranger and now in front of him is the man who caused the blue light. The girl agreed and said that she found this man asleep, then questioned him, but he turned out to be stubborn and continued to ask stupid questions, so he asked the man whether he was a friend or an enemy, and then a blue light appeared. The chief was surprised and asked the girl if the light was really blue without a red tint. The girl agreed and said that he was completely blue. The chief asked if the man could tell what his name meant. The man replied that his name was Diaz. The chief said it was a name that echoed in secret. He then said that Diaz had called himself Aruna's friend. He asked if Diaz would do the same. Diaz thought that now he knew that this young lady's name was Aruna. Diaz asked that since everyone here is on his land, so of course they would all be friends to him one way or another. The chief asked the man why he thought so. Diaz replied that it was because it was his job. The chief asked Diaz from whose authority he got the job. Diaz replied that he thought it was from his highness the king. In an instant, Aruna pulls out an arrow and pulls it on the bow and then aims at Diaz to shoot. The man was scared and immediately raised his hands up. The chief asked Aruna to calm down because there is no need to be so impatient. After that, he turned to Diaz and asked the man if he could tell him how it happened from beginning to end. How did it happen that the man received such an order from the king? Diaz thought that he wasn't quite sure what was meant by from beginning to end, but he told the story of the second half of his life and how it went from when he was little. The chief said he could see clearly now, the reason why a man shines blue. He did not expect that such a person would exist besides the owners of the horn. He turns to Diaz and says that he recognizes him as a feudal lord. He will also protect all his subjects with everything in his power. He wants to hear the man's point of view and what if they didn't recognize them. He asks what their actions will be. Diaz wonders what if the residents hadn't become his people. He replies that nothing will happen. The chief replied that they would be friends, although they were not his subjects. The man agrees and says that they will share this plane as neighbors. Diaz smiles and says that if necessary, they would help each other in a neighborly way, and he thinks that this would make them friends. The chief listens attentively to Diaz's words. Diaz doesn't understand why the man is asking him all these questions. If they are not his subjects, then what then? Suddenly, Diaz realizes that it could be that the people in this village are not his subjects. He thinks that this can't be happening. This is his land, and logically everything on it is his. The chief asked if Diaz really saw everything clearly now. He guessed right in his assumption, they are not his subjects. 
He says honestly that they are enemies of King Dias. They fought a long war with his country. However, be that as it may, even though they are enemies of his king, they are now just friends for the man. He says Dias is one of the blues, the rarest blues. With this, he can live peacefully among them. He then tells Dias to raise his head and asks if he would like to hear his story. The chief's name is Moru and he is the leader of the Oni people. Their people have been fighting with Dias's country for power on these plains for a long time. One war followed another for 50 long years which eventually led to their defeat. Suffering great losses, they were driven from the plains. Dias said that according to the chief, they were driven out of the plains 50 years ago, but he asks how it is that they still live here. The chief pointed to his horn and says that they can store magical powers in their horns and with its help they can use many magical skills. One of their magical skills is fog. They can hide people, houses, and even their presence. Using this power, they returned to the plains and lived in hiding from the king. Diaz replies that this is all amazing of course, but should he reveal such a truth because he serves this king? The chief replies that he shares with Diaz because he is blue in color. He wouldn't say that to another person. There is a magical power called the Court of Souls. If there had been any trace of enmity in Diaz's soul, it would have shown up as red. He laughs and asks Diaz if he thinks it's typical for his age to stick to his parents' last requests. The chief said they were lucky that such a fool had become the feudal lord of these plains, but there was a limit to how much they could hide themselves. Diaz asks why they are staying here. They could go to some faraway place and live in peace. The chief replies that they cannot leave this place so easily. Their lives depend on cattle called Mimu, which inhabit these plains, because of this it is difficult for them to leave this place. So, a man will protect his subjects and become an excellent feudal lord. If he fails, they don't know who the next feudal lord will be. Diaz asks the man what about his predecessor. The chief agreed and said that he had been, but lived in a completely different place. He was a fool who was engaged in bad hobbies. However, it seems that he recently died of an illness. He then tells Diaz that he has no shelter and supplies. They will help him, even share their livestock. They asked him not to say anything about the village to the residents of the capital in return. He also clarified that he will now be protected by Diaz's silence and he can also use Aruna. The girl looked at the man. Suddenly, the girl turned to the chief and screamed, asking what he meant. The chief replied that there were many things he had to be able to do in order to live on the plains, she would live with a man. The chief says Aruna brought this stranger to them, so she has to take responsibility. Diaz realized that this was his first step as a feudal lord. You need to start living under the same roof with a girl named Aruna. The Mimu is a breed of livestock that has two horns, is completely covered with soft and fluffy hair. They are not grown for meat, but for wool. The more they eat herbs, the faster their fur grows. Wool is cut, then exchanged in the village for food and other supplies. Diaz asks if this is really the case. Aruna shouted at the man to see if he was really bullying her. She asks if it's true that he didn't understand what she told the man. Diaz shouted that he understood everything. Mimu, farming, care and maintenance of yurts, hunting. Diaz understands that there is a lot to remember. Aruna is probably not here of her own free will, but she is conscientious in teaching him survival skills. As promised by Chief Moru, he was given a place. To respond to the trust placed in him by the people of Oni, he decided, as a feudal lord, to increase the population. Then he turned to Aruna and asked if she could tell him how to increase the population. The girl got angry and asked if he wanted anything else. As for the population, they don't count it. Thus, the account remained unknown. Aruna said that the man should stop talking nonsense because there are more important things because now you need to worry about supplies. If all he has is just a lot of people, then all they can count on is starvation, illness and death. She asks him to answer if he understood it. Diaz said he hoped they would provide him with more help when they had more people. Aruna shouted at the man not to even dream about it. Diaz replied that he knew that. 
He apologized to the girl and asked her to forget that even he had mentioned it. He thinks he needs to solve the problem of housing and supplies. Then the girl takes off the bag and throws it to Diaz. The man asks what it is. The girl replies that it is an earthen matabi. It is made of grass, which wild animals love, and if a man dispels it, they will immediately come running. She explains that when a man hunts, the man will receive not only meat from these animals, but also skins and horns. He should take everything with him to the village and exchange for supplies, and maybe even for a yurt. By hunting like this, he will be able to lay the foundation for the development of his land. Diaz said it was great, and he was pretty good at hunting. He doesn't have to think much there. Aruna told the man to keep the wind at his back and walk until he saw the village. If he uses it too close to the village, the animals may attack. After a while, Diaz comes to the plane and thinks that it is already possible to start here. The man took out a bag and asked how much he should use. He doesn't remember Aruna telling him exactly how much is needed. He decides that there is no need to doubt and just act. Then the man tosses the bag and throws it away. The pouch bursts and a lot of seeds fall out of it. The man sighs and says he did it. Now you just have to wait for the animals to arrive. He is wondering how many animals he needs to exchange for a yurt. He thinks that maybe there is one animal or ten. Then for ten yurts, he needs a hundred animals. He thinks it will take more than a day. Suddenly, the man turns around and sees a huge number of animals rushing straight at him. Diaz is surprised by the number of them. He does not know where these animals came from on the plane, but if he can get everything, he could immediately achieve his goal. Diaz is preparing for a fight. His tactic is to swing his battle axe with all the strength he has, trusting only his instincts. It's not that good, but he's confident in himself. As a beginner, he was taught the basics of sword and bow, aiming a little for weak spots or gaps in armor, it all sounded too difficult, and at first he couldn't get used to it. Read the opponent's movement and find the right line of attack to strike. It was all very difficult for him, he doesn't want to accuse himself of being stupid. However, at that moment, the battle axe turned out to be an amazing weapon. He no longer had to worry about how to fight. If they have a shield, then you need to break through it. If they are wearing armor, you need to break through them. No matter what they had, they all died the same way. Suddenly, the animals exchanged glances and raced away. Diaz realized that they were running away. He thought about killing half of them. It was quite easy, their movements were predictable. Then he examines the field and realizes that he has caused trouble, because there are quite a lot of animals. He has no idea how he's going to move them all. Anyway, he can carry one at a time, but he didn't think about it right away and started swinging the axe like a fool. Arun will be called a futile fool again. No one is able to withstand her cold gaze. After a while, Diaz comes back. Aruna meets him and says that the man did quite well. He killed a black buffalo on his first hunt, and it's really worthy of a man. Diaz looked at the girl questioningly and asked if it was really a black buffalo. He said he killed about half of what came running, but couldn't catch up with them, so they ran away. The girl was surprised and asked exactly how many the man was able to kill. Diaz sighed and said that there were about 30 or 40 heads. Aruna screamed that it was a lot, and it was just amazing. The girl said she saw the man in a new light. The chief added that the man had done a great job and did not even brag about it. Aruna agreed and said that she was telling the truth and she had never seen such a courageous guy. Aruna ran and said she would tell everyone else and they would transport all the other black buffaloes of Diaz. She says they will take them away. The chief told the man that he was very strong. Hunting 30 black buffaloes at once is really a magnificent display of masculinity. Diaz thought about it and asked what the leader meant by masculinity. Judging by what he sees, his idea is different from the others. The leader replied that masculinity is masculinity. In a word, this is the value of a man. A man who works hard. A man who is reliable and resourceful. All these and similar traits are combined into one, which is called masculinity. 
Daya's asked if he really has this masculinity, Aruna's attitude towards him has changed for the better. The chief replied that Aruna was considered the most desirable girl in the village. Of course, she will show interest in such and such masculinity. Daya's asked the chief to make him understand correctly. Is he really going to be popular with girls with his masculinity? The chief asked what answer Daya's wanted to hear. For women, masculinity is a criterion. Daya's asked if there were any other traits. For example, how handsome he is or how well he speaks. The chief asked Daya's not to say such nonsense. Can he fill his belly with a beautiful face and can his sweet speeches multiply his herd of Mimu? If you marry a man devoid of masculinity, not only they will have to starve, but also their children. All traits except masculinity have absolutely no weight for the women of this tribe. Daya's realized that another culture has its own views on common sense and a sense of values. The chief added that if Daya's wants to marry Aruna, he must prepare a price for the bride. Daya's asked what it meant. The chief replied that Aruna was beautiful and also a skilled worker, so he expected the price to be high. All the animals that the man killed today, he thinks it's a good price for Aruna's hand. Daya's asked if he could really marry Aruna. The leader replied that first steps should be taken according to individual requirements. Daya's thought that the chief was saying that everything would be fine. Their view of marriage is frightening. He understands that now is not the time for this. He must set priorities, get comfortable, and replenish supplies first. The chief said that the man does not need to worry because they are compatible with many races and are able to have children. After a while, Daya's was sleeping in his house. He woke up, and when he got out of bed, he saw Aruna. The girl wished the man good morning and said that she had cooked breakfast. Diaz sat down at the table and then picked up the dish to taste. He said that it looks very appetizing. Aruna then asked Diaz when he planned to hunt today. The man replies that he thought they had everything they needed now and then asks if anything else is needed. Aruna replies that if there are more people here, they will need a well and a warehouse and equipment for lifting water. They can hire a craftsman from the village, but it takes more goods to bargain. The man said he would hunt black buffalo. Aruna replies that this is a bad idea since now the village does not need them much. She then asked if Daya's had hunted monsters before. She asks how about hunting monsters. Daya's thinks that there are monsters in all the dark corners of the planet. They appear unnoticed from the black miasma all over the earth or from dungeons and forgotten ruins. They seem to hate life itself, going berserk and attacking everything they see, leaving only death and destruction behind. Their flesh and blood are poison and are not suitable for use, but the hide, horns and nails, as well as the demon core located next to their heart, have applications in everyday life. Daya's asked the girl if there were monsters in these parts. Aruna replied that there were few of them, but they were there. She can use magic to find them, so if a man takes her with him, then everything should work out. Diaz replied that hunting is not a walk through the village, so it is dangerous. He asked the girl to just tell him where to look for them. Aruna replied that if she went with Diaz, it would be like walking through the village. In the end, Diaz agreed to take the girl with him. He comes out and pays attention to the men who were in the fence. These Mimu were given by the chief of the Moru. The male's name is Francois, and the female's name is Francis. Then the man came to a nearby stream to wash and shave. Suddenly, he notices the villagers who brought supplies that were exchanged for buffaloes. Diaz is trying to figure out what to do because he has not finished shaving yet, so he will look untidy. Suddenly, Aruna's voice was heard saying that she had finished packing. Suddenly, all the residents were very surprised. Diaz looked at Aruna, who had changed a lot. The man realized that Aruna's makeup was different from usual. Aruna ran up to Diaz and said that she had asked the guys to look after me. She said that was why they could spend the whole day together. Diaz realized that they had to go right now and kill all the monsters before anything happened to him. The area where monsters appear is in the north of the plains. This area is known for spawning monsters from time to time. 
Diaz thinks they should have enough goods to build a well and a warehouse after collecting useful parts from one or two monsters. Aruna asks to leave the search for monsters on her and her magic. She is good only at household chores but also at magic. Diaz asks the girl to start. Aruna smiled and then clenched her hands into a fist and began to chant. A glowing dome appeared around the girl but she continued to cast the spell. The girl opened her eyes and said that she had found a monster. It looks like he's very big and there aren't any other monsters around anymore, so it's probably his fault. Then they set off and climbed the mountain of stones. Suddenly Aruna gets very scared and looks straight at the monster. Diaz asks if it's really a turtle. Aruna says it's an earth dragon, why is this monster here? Diaz said it was good, whoever it was, he was starting. He asks Aruna to hide. Aruna asks the girl not to be stupid. It's an earth dragon because a man can't win. Diaz says that if it gets dangerous they can run away, but what will they do if he chases them? Suddenly, the earth dragon notices the man. Diaz thinks he won't let that happen. If he targets the neck or legs, he'll hide like a turtle. If that happens, he wonders if his axe will be able to penetrate this shell. Diaz thinks he won't know until he tries. The man attacks the shell and his axe cracks. Diaz understands that he is very strong. Diaz jumps to the side and looks at the rolled up monster. Diaz thinks he's blocking the hole with a shell. The man did not think that a dragon could do this. Aruna, frightened, shouts to Diaz to run away because it is impossible to kill an earth dragon alone. However, before retreating, he wants to give his all. The man is sure that Aruna will call him a futile fool again, but he has no other place to attack. If the first punch doesn't work, then you need to hit twice. If this does not work, then you need to hit three times. That's how he fights. Until he gets tired, he can repeat it over and over again. The man hits the monster with an axe, and the axe cracks. Aruna is very surprised, and Diaz thinks that he almost broke it. Diaz holds the hammer to himself and uses the repair skill. Suddenly, the hammer was repaired. Aruna was very surprised. Diaz thought that this might surprise people, because he was also surprised when he used this skill for the first time. He got this battle axe when he was still a rookie in the war. This is his battle trophy from the man of the enemy country whom he defeated. He left the axe because its design looked cool and was very durable. It repairs minor damage by itself. It's an automatic process, but mentally he can apply the repair again. Diaz says that everything is fine and a second round is needed. It's been a long time and Diaz is sweating all over. He can't break through the shell in any way. When night falls, they will have no choice but to return. Diaz realizes that he can't even handle the old turtle. Diaz continues to beat the turtle shell, and suddenly, there are many cracks in the place of the axe. Aruna was very surprised that the shell had broken through. The turtle noticed that its shell had broken through. The turtle then activated its skill and hit Diaz. At that moment, Diaz was able to hit the turtle right on the legs. Diaz realized that he could attack too. The man holds up his axe to defend himself from his attacks, then suddenly the turtle hit again. Aruna realized that this earth dragon was emitting magical miasma again. They reach the girl, even though she is so far away. She looks at Diaz and says she doesn't understand why it doesn't affect Diaz. At this moment, Diaz thinks that the monster is not attacking at all. He's not complaining, but he's going to keep hitting the crack. Suddenly, the turtle's head sticks out to attack the man. Suddenly, she spits out some kind of projectile, which rushes straight towards Diaz. The man thinks he sees that this is the first time someone has pierced the shell of this turtle. His attack became more violent and chaotic. It looks like this earth dragon is furious. If this continues, he will get this loot. Suddenly, the monster's attack rushes straight towards Aruna. The girl flies away. Diaz realizes that the monster has attacked Aruna. He doesn't want to kill him, but Aruna. Diaz begins to fly into an incredible rage. Diaz thinks he made her a promise that he was her friend. No matter which monster is strong, it will stand and fight. Diaz attacks the monster and breaks through its shell. 
The man at Aruna's asks if he's okay. Suddenly, Aruna attacks Diaz and starts crying, hugging the man. Suddenly, the girl says that she wants to marry Diaz. Suddenly, voices are heard asking if Aruna and Diaz are okay. They were gone for a long time, so they went to look for them. Then they notice the body of the Earth Dragon, which shows no signs of life, and Diaz and Aruna were next to it. Diaz realized that Aruna's grip was tighter than a dragon's. He can't get out, no matter how hard he tries. He asked Aruna to calm down and not cry. Then Diaz and Aruna started to return to the village. The residents were very surprised when they saw that Master Diaz had defeated the Earth Dragon. The monster's huge body was being carried on a huge cart. Diaz thought that this turtle was very heavy. Even with all the guys from the village, when they brought him to the village, it was already the morning of the next day. The chief turned to Diaz and said that who would have thought that a man could defeat an earth dragon alone? She is amazed that the magical miasma that was close to them did not affect them. After processing, most of the materials will be preserved. Their value is great, they have nothing equal to exchange. For a small fraction, they can recycle a corpse for materials as well as build a well and a warehouse. In addition, they will build a yurt and a storage facility for these materials. A man can leave some of the materials from the dragon. Then they can exchange with the merchants who come here. It will be useful for the feudal lord to establish good relations with them. The chief then talks about Aruna's wedding gift. If a man gives her at least something from a dragon, her parents will be delighted. Diaz asked to be stopped and asked what she meant by a wedding present. The chief said that she would have a wedding, even if he was against it. She suggests what kind of worries there will be when your neighbor is a dragon slayer who is not part of the village. This can turn into distrust and distrust into fear. You might also think what kind of masculinity they emit after killing a dragon. If he rejects Aruna, then all the girls of the village will try to win his heart in any way. The woman is wondering how Diaz will cope with this. Suddenly, Diaz notices a little girl clinging to his leg, and then, shifting his gaze, he notices a huge number of girls who were watching the man. The chief said that, at the moment, the girls are waiting because they know that a man from the kingdom takes only one girl to wife, and they also think that Aruna is a virgin. Diaz asked if the chief meant that he had no choice but to get married. He's thinking about getting engaged. The woman asked about the engagement. She says they don't have such a custom and Aruna has already gone to her parents to inform them about her marriage. The man can only decide when to get married or find a compromise that both sides will agree to. Thus, the marriage of Diaz and Aruna became official. There's nothing he doesn't like about Aaron. She is beautiful and sweet and also takes great care of the house and she is affectionate to a man. Now that he thought about it, it might not be a bad idea. He is 35 years old and it is high time to start thinking about marriage. Then he wonders how old Aruna is. Diaz turns to the man and asks if he knows how old Aruna is. The man says that he knows that Aruna turned 15 this year. The man says that Aruna was lucky, she met Diaz when she reached the age of marriage. Diaz thought he knew she would be young, but it would be more like father and daughter. According to the laws of the kingdom, she must be 18 years old. It won't be until she turns 18, so the engagement should last three years. He will have plenty of time to become an excellent feudal lord, and by that time he will be ready for marriage. Then he thinks that it is impossible to just accept this idea. It would be an insult to her feelings. He must devote himself to this idea, so he will show her his devotion, as a feudal lord of this land, and as a man. Then a month has passed since Aruna and he are married, or rather engaged. The well has been dug and the warehouse building has been built, now they enjoy most of the amenities. However, one thing has not changed. The total number of new people in his area is zero. He has ideas on how to increase the number of people, but he is not sure if they will work. He thinks he can consider Aruna a feudal lord's man, but now she is his family. It would be nice if new people fell from the sky. Suddenly, he hears Aruna screaming, who tells Diaz that they are going to have a baby. 
a jug of water falls right out of Diaz's hands, Diaz asks Aruna if she is sure about this. Aruna said they were finally going to have a little baby. Diaz and Aruna shouted the face of victory together. After a while, the man coddled Francis. He said he didn't think she would get pregnant so quickly. Then Francois came up to the man. Diaz asked him if he was really jealous. Diaz thought that, according to Aruna, Mimu are smart and can understand human speech. Using their wits, they were able to cope with this harsh world. Even a wild Mimu is able to master human speech in about a week is amazing. This explains how the Mimu became domesticated. It was a voluntary decision by me. They were able to get human protection and even care and food. With such benefits, they decided to become domesticated. Aruna said it's not all good news. No matter how smart they are, they are prone to fear, especially when they get pregnant. It happens when people stop being afraid. They find solace in the presence of the strongest member of the herd. In this case, it is Diaz, so they must stay with the man as long as possible to keep fear in check, especially at night when they are sleeping. Diaz said he understood everything and he just had to sleep here with them. Aruna replied that this was not the case. Aruna replied that they were taking them to their yurt. Many men don't like it. The yurt can become polluted and smelly and some find it difficult to relax when Mimu is constantly looking at them. Diaz was surprised that this was all and then said that it didn't bother him at all. Francis and Francois are their family and for the sake of their baby, it's nothing at all. Aruna said she was so happy that the man felt that way just to think that he has such kindness and masculinity, because a man after all. To Diaz, the Mimu sound the same, but Aruna tells him that there are subtle differences in their tone and Aruna seems to be able to understand them. He doesn't understand what they're talking about. The girl asked Francis what she was saying. Aruna then says that she and Diaz are not quite husband and wife yet. Then she said that Francis was behaving indecently. Aruna asked what's wrong with spending time together, improving the relationship as a couple. Then she says that everything is fine and she is not holding back much. Then the girl said that everything was fine and asked me to leave their personal life alone. Then the man notices a green glow at the girl's horn. Diaz realizes that this is the first time he has seen him. Aruna is surprised and says that something has disturbed the magic barrier. She notes that someone is approaching in the east, but does not know who it is. She tries to understand and thinks that these seem to be people on horseback who are about 10 years old. Diaz realizes that the green glow at the horn is an invasion and to the east is the direction of the kingdom. He thinks that someone has decided to visit these plains. If they are bandits, then there will be problems with them, so he decides to go and check. The man asks Aruna to mask everything with her magic. The man pays attention to me and says that he will be back soon. There are only ten of them and they can't be stronger than a dragon. The man rushes straight towards the intruders. He says that there are three of them on horseback and four on foot. Aruna said there were ten of them and she counted the horses together. The chance that they are not enemies is small. If they have bows, they will be a problem but he will end up with one gift. Suddenly, one of the warriors calls Diaz by name. The young man rejoices and says that it was a long time ago. Diaz recognizes the young man as Klaus. He thinks about how Klaus was his comrade in arms. He respected him despite the fact that he was a commoner and became a reliable companion to whom he could entrust his life. Diaz said he was glad to see Klaus and then asked him what he was doing here. Klaus replies that he is now a guide and a security guard. Klaus says that the nobility came to him because they have a request for Klaus. Klaus notices the girl and tries to figure out who she is. Klaus said he was grateful if the man could bring them to his domain because everyone was tired after the road. Diaz asked about his possessions and said that if they meant where he lived, then he would take them to his home. Klaus was happy because he would soon see the domain of Diaz himself. He can't wait because he already has a fantasy about what they are like. After a while they come to a solid plain. 
Diaz thought that they had disguised everything except the yurt, which was built as a training, but he did not expect that the magic would work so well. It's just incredible. Diaz opens the door and tells the guests not to be shy and enter. All the guests go to the yurt where there was nothing. The girl said that it was a great honor for her to meet the hero Diaz. She is the third princess and her name is Diana. Diana asked if she could ask what kind of tent it was. The man's possession is still being built and the girl is sure of it. However, she does not see or hear the craftsman. Diaz started to speak, but was interrupted by a knight who called Diaz a fool and told him to address Her Royal Highness as Diana. The man ordered Diaz to know his place. Diana ordered the knight to stop. Diaz told Diana that he did not have a craftsman, and there was nothing that could be called a possession. It's a tent, that's all he has. It may not be a castle, but he has crippled himself several times by building it himself. Everyone was surprised. Diana asked if the man really said that he built it with his own hands. She asked Diaz where his carpenters were. Diaz replied that there were none on such an empty plain. The girl asked if he could hire some from a nearby village. He just knows that Diaz was awarded capital for the development of the land as well as a generous gift befitting his hero status by His Royal Highness the King. Diaz replied that he knew about it but did not remember even receiving a copper coin. He has never been given financial support to build or develop anything here. He didn't even get the supplies. He thought he would die like a dog on the side of the road, even though there is not even a road here. Klaus was beside himself with rage after hearing what he had heard. Diaz then asked Diana what brought her here. The girl said that the war calls the hero again. Now the situation is heating up for the kingdom, so she came to seek the hero's help and begs him to lend him her power. Diana replied that she was ready to reward the man with herself or either of the two girls behind her, Priscilla or Merida, would become a partner in marriage. Diaz thought about the war and that the girl must be joking. She can't leave Francis now. And he doesn't understand why a girl talks about marrying a guy she just met. He thinks that he already has Aruna and tells Diana that he has plans and he will no longer participate in the war. He cannot help them with troops because as they see, this feudal lord is not able to send at least one warrior. Diana gritted her teeth and asked if the man could change his mind. She may even give you an additional reward. Diaz apologizes and says he can't help them and it doesn't matter what the reward is. If that's all they wanted, then the man asked everyone to leave. The knight insulted the man and said that Her Royal Highness the princess was asking for his help and he had the audacity to insult the princess by refusing. Klaus tried to stop the man, but he did not listen to him and said that Diaz was too arrogant. In an instant, Diaz used his axe and neutralized the knight by breaking his sword. Diaz thought about how he felt the man's bloodlust. He posed, hoping to scare him. Diaz puts the axe on the ground and says that their conversation is over, so they all have to get out. Klaus approached the knight and said that they had to leave here very quickly. He asked the man not to drain any more, otherwise there would be problems. Klaus smiles and says that even all of them together are no match for him and asks if he really still wants to do it. That is, to fight a hero. Diaz was very angry. He thought about what he had done and overdid it very much, so he tore through the floor. The man thinks that Aruna will kill him. At that moment Diana thought that the treasury was empty and there were no troops either. That's not what he was told at all. She called Diaz just useless. She also cursed him for throwing it away like trash. The girl threatens to keep Diaz waiting and she will make him regret it. Diaz watched them go, and then he heard Aruna say that all these women were shining red. One of the soldiers shone blue, and the rest were red or white. She then asked the man if she had scared him. She knew that Francis would cry and of course she cried and wanted to be with a man. They came under the magic of disguise and saw what was going on there. Diaz hugged Francis and apologized, saying he couldn't stay with her. Then everyone else came up to the man and he started stroking everyone. Diaz then said that the women who radiated the red glow meant they were hostile. 
Does this mean that they pose a danger to Aruna as well? Aruna says the Soul Court has shown her that they are a danger to both of them because they are a family. Diaz replies that this is indeed the case. The man thinks that means these three were hostile to him. Now he definitely can't trust talking about war and marriage, so he did the right thing by driving them away. Aruna said that one soldier was shining blue and most likely it was Klaus. Diaz remembered his kind smile and smiled too. After a while, Diaz wakes up from some kind of stirring. The man wishes good morning to Francis and Francois. Aruna was cooking breakfast. The girl wished the man a good morning and then served breakfast on the table. Suddenly, the girl's horn begins to glow. Aruna says that an intruder has appeared. He's only one, so he has more details. She says that this is a man and he is in the east. The girl says that it seems he got lost because he walks in circles. Diaz asked if he was really alone because he didn't think it was a traveler. After a while, Diaz was standing on the street, and suddenly Aruna came out to him with Francis and Francois. The man asked if the girl was going to go with him. Aruna replied that he was the only one, so there was nothing to worry about. They will hide their presence so it's okay, and she has no desire to watch Francis cry so even if the man refuses, they will go together. After a while, he walks around the field. Diaz notices a familiar face and asks Klaus if it's him. The young man is very happy when he sees Diaz. Klaus said he was trying to find his way back, but he got lost. Diaz replied that they had no other landmarks except the grass. Diaz replied that he thought Klaus had returned to the kingdom with these ladies. Diaz then asked Klaus what happened to his gear. Klaus laughed and said that he was thrown out and also told him to hand over his armor and sword back. Diaz was very surprised. He asked if it was really his kind and if it was because he had kicked them out recently. Klaus said it wasn't like that and he wanted it too. Klaus then asked if Diaz had heard what they had said to him. War is brewing in the kingdom again. If war breaks out, he will be returned back to the front line. This was not part of the plans for the future, and he took this opportunity to find a friend. He has something he would like to do the most. Diaz asks Klaus what he is so eager to do. Klaus says he wants to work for Diaz, and then asks if he could hire him as a soldier. Diaz thinks they fought completely trusting each other. There was no one he could rely on as much as Klaus, and he would be glad to see Klaus as his ally. Diaz became worried and shook his head. Aruna suddenly appears and says that if Diaz is worried about her, then everything is fine. Klaus emits a blue light all the time he was talking to the man. Klaus is startled by Aruna's abrupt appearance. Aruna asks Diaz if he would like to consult with her. She thanks Diaz and smiles, and the man smiles back at her. At that moment, Klaus asked Diaz who this lady was and what kind of sheep were next to her. Diaz said it's a long story. Now Diaz has an ally named Klaus and the number of his subjects has increased to one. Sometime in the past, during the war, Klaus begged the captain to wait and asked if the man really wanted to just leave these people and run away. The man replied that they were just retreating to gather reinforcements. Klaus turned to the man and said that if they left, then who would fight the enemy, because there were women and children in the nearest shelter. The captain replied that they were in the hands of God and then ran away. Klaus begged him to stop and wait. Currently, Mimu was eating weed and Aruna was cooking. Diaz and Klaus were building a new yurt for Klaus. Diaz thought he said he didn't mind living in that yurt, but he tore it up and giving the damaged one would be wrong, so they built a new one. Then Aruna called them and told the men to go to lunch. Diaz was surprised to see a black buffalo. Everyone sits down at the dining table. Diaz thanked Aruna for the food and asks Klaus not to yawn. Klaus said that the food was simply delicious and it was right up to the feudal lord. Klaus told Aruna that she would be just a wonderful wife. He asked Diaz if this was really the case. Diaz gave a positive response. Aruna told Klaus to eat more because they have a lot of food. Klaus thanked the girl. Then Diaz turned to the girl and asked Aruna about Klaus' outfit. 
he said they have dragon parts in stock so they can use them to make weapons and armor. Aruna said they could do that or the pater in the village had already started doing something. All the dragon parts are useful, so nothing goes missing. Swords, spears, tendons and bowstrings are made from fangs and claws, shields and the like are made from the shell. Diaz says that in case of an exchange in the village, they will spend more materials. Diaz notices Klaus' face and asks him what's wrong. Klaus asks the man if he really said about the dragon. Diaz agrees, and then Klaus says that he has all the dragon parts, so he killed one. Diaz said it was an earth dragon. He managed to break through the shell and kill him. He couldn't fly or something and looked like a turtle. Klaus thought that it would take a whole squad of knights armed with siege weapons to win. Klaus is debating whether Diaz is really spending such valuable materials on someone like him. Diaz replies that he wants to make Klaus the captain of his soldiers as soon as he gets them. If they just lie there, then what is their value? Klaus is surprised and then says that Diaz can count on him. He would give his life for a man. Klaus then tells Diaz and Aruna that he will protect their land and people no matter who the enemy is. Diaz asked Klaus to speak less formally. Klaus says he has to show proper respect to a man. Diaz thought it was good that Klaus was excited about the job. After a while, Klaus practiced in armor and with a new spear. Ten days have passed since then. The spear and armor were made entirely from dragon parts. The outfit is so valuable that Klaus is not sure that a nobleman or a king could afford it. Klaus remembers Diaz and thinks that the man trusts him so much. Klaus hopes that he will be able to meet the man's expectations. Now the capital is mired in disputes over the throne. Everyone supports their faction of the nobility by plotting. It's the same in the provinces. Far from the eye of the capital, the feudal lords do whatever they please without fear. On the way here, Klaus saw the cruelty of the neighboring feudal lord Kazdex. Diaz's reward was probably stolen by the second prince, rumored to have been consumed by greed. The third princess Diana, rumored to have less military power than political influence, undoubtedly came to Diaz in the hope of seducing and gaining his support. Due to the contesting of the throne, this could escalate into waves that will shake this land. That's why he came here. If the war comes again as a soldier, this time Klaus may die. Although if it's for Diaz's sake he won't mind, Klaus thinks that maybe he will have a chance to die with honor. Klaus then notices Diaz, who has taken a gun with him. He approaches the man and asks him what happened. Diaz says Aruna discovered the intrusion, twelve people coming from the east, one of them is on the verge of death, he wants to go to them before it's too late. Klaus asks if he should go with the man. Diaz asks Klaus to stay here. If they turn out to be dangerous, Aruna and Mimu will immediately retreat. He wants Klaus to be here to protect them if that happens. Klaus agrees and tells Diaz that he can count on him. Then Diaz leaves with Aruna and the girl covers everything with fog. Klaus thought it must be the magic of Aruna's concealment because they disappeared as if dissolving. He thought that this power was simply amazing. After a while, Klaus notices Diaz and thinks that they have returned earlier than he thought, so he does not understand what happened. He saw Diaz and Aruna leading some strangers. After a while, Aruna helped the old people and served them food. Diaz thought about how it seemed these old ladies had been abandoned. Due to the crisis, they were expelled by the village to reduce the number of hungry mouths. The reason was the uprising started by the second son of the Duke of Kazdex. He wants to overthrow his incompetent father and heir. Riots are still going on in the neighboring territory. The leader of these women is Maya's grandmother. She used fortune telling to find a way to a safe place and led the group on the long road to here. Diaz shouted at Klaus that they had done it. Diaz was glad that in one day he had increased the number of his people by twelve, Klaus thought about what he knew he was going to say. Since they were exiled, he is free to decide what to do with them. But they definitely won't be able to contribute much. Diaz said it was amazing that they were all over 70, and Grandma Maya was 90 years old. They live so long. 
He wonders if they will tell him the secret of their longevity. Claus asks Diaz if that means they could die any day, that's why they were expelled. Diaz then lifts the logs and says they need more yurts. Klaus thought about how many years ago the whole village had heard that their camp had been invaded by the enemy. Fearing the strategic loss of the village, they had to help them. They can't just leave. Klaus was left alone, so he realized that the enemy was already here, and it turns out that he would die here. Suddenly, Diaz appeared, who was glad that he had met Klaus. Diaz said everyone was running away, so he thought he was alone. Klaus asked Diaz where he had been. Diaz said he heard a baby crying. I went to look and found the boy in his arms. Diaz approached the shelter and asked ordinary people to take the boy. The child was crying and asked Diaz not to leave, as he was scared. Diaz smiled and asked the boy not to be afraid because he was protecting the boy, so he just asked to wait for him a little longer. Then Diaz closed the shelter and, standing up, looked at the soldiers who were angrily rushing at them. Diaz approached Klaus and asked him not to die. Klaus nervously agreed. Then he doesn't remember what happened after that. With his back to the shelter and standing next to Diaz, he struck with his sword with all the strength he had. He couldn't tell how many there were. He thought in battle how useful he was, even though he was almost useless. However, he was confident that just staying in the rear would make it easier for Diaz to kill the enemy. It was a better strategy in these circumstances. When reinforcements finally arrived, the next day, the enemy had already left the village. Klaus realized that Diaz hadn't changed at all. No matter how high he rises in the world, he will be kind, friendly, and honest, as always. Klaus looked at the people and realized that he was a fool. He thought he would have deserved to die with dignity. He has to live and stay close to Diaz, Diaz became a feudal lord and became a remarkable leader. That's why Klaus told Diaz that he would help him, so he shouldn't pull so hard because he would tear up the yurt. It's been a few days since they accepted the old ladies. Aruna examined their souls and saw that they were all blue, so they had nothing to fear. As more people have joined them, they are discussing how to name their village. Aruna asks what about the name from the village of Iluk? It is a traditional name that means the first village. Klaus bursts in and says he thinks Dragon Slayer Village is a good name. Aruna refuses. Diaz thinks that this is how the first village on his territory was founded. Everyone wanted to celebrate, so they threw a modest party. Although it's quiet for her, but when she looks at all those smiling faces, Diaz himself can't help but smile. He must do his best to have many more reasons to smile. Aruna approaches the man and asks the man if he has a minute. Aruna says she wants to talk to a man about population growth. The girl then apologized for being a distraction, but they should sort it out soon. She asks what the man thinks about what they talked about earlier. Diaz thought that there had been a conversation the other day about how to attract new settlers, but it was difficult to come up with something worthwhile. After a while, Aruna runs up to Diaz and says that she saw a merchant who was walking along this path. The man agrees and says that he needs to go. They are looking forward to some merchants. Not only to trade goods, but also to spread information about his land and make inquiries. Klaus said he was wondering what kind of merchant he was. Diaz agrees and adds that he has not seen them before. Then the merchant approaches and Diaz notices an ordinary frog instead of a human. Then the merchant tells if the man is really the dragon slayer he has heard so much about. The merchant says his name is Pajin and he hopes for a mutually beneficial exchange. Aruna said that his race is known as the frog. Everyone was surprised that Pajin was a frogman. Pajin wanted to evaluate the materials and asked Diaz to show him the materials he had received from the Earth Dragon, as the man had heard that Diaz had killed him. Aruna analyzed Pajin's soul and said that she was white, which means that he is not dangerous. His goal is trade, but he has no good intentions either. In this case, Diaz does not understand how to trade with him. Diaz then brings a piece of the dragon shell. He asks Pajin if there is any problem. 
Pajin replies that he heard that Diaz defeated the dragon alone, so he thought this one was small. He apologizes for being rude and asks the man if he really killed this earth dragon alone. Diaz thought that Pajin might have assumed that he had just found his corpse. He understands that now the merchant suspects him of something and this is not very good. He turns to Klaus and asks him to put down a piece of shell, which is good for separation, and he will go for his axe. After a while, Diaz returns with an axe. With one swipe, he splits the dragon's shell into several pieces. Diaz thought that of all the materials collected from the dragon, the shell was the most difficult to disassemble. In an attempt to find a way to help the Oni people in their work, he simply went to the shell with his axe. A few days later, he found a way to split a piece of shell with one blow. Klaus asked me to call it a striking dragon strike. Diaz realized that Klaus is terrible when he comes up with a name. Klaus then turns to Pajin and asks him if he believes him. Pajin asks the man to let him buy these split pieces of shell. Pajin says he'll be able to afford it one way or another. He is an honest trader, so he will figure out the market price of this product. Suddenly, two twin elves come out of the carriage, holding hands. Their eyes were lifeless. He looked at Diaz's angry face. Diaz stared at the lifeless eyes of the twins, who were probably orphaned like him. Diaz realized that these twins were a commodity for Pajin. Pajin sells them, so the twins are servants. Suddenly, Aruna took Diaz's hand and asked him to calm down. Maya said that Diaz would scare the children with his appearance. The woman turned to Mr. Barfik Pajin and said that they were very sorry, but they did not want to buy servants. Pajin was very surprised and said that they had misunderstood everything and asked for an explanation. He said that these twins are not servants. If he hadn't taken them as goods, they would have been dead long ago. The two were born as twins in their village. In this village, people condemn twins as children from the womb of an animal, harbingers of disasters. Obviously, they were supposed to be executed the day after they were born. However, their parents did not accept it. They took their children and ran away from the village and lived in secret so that they would never be seen. Pajin met them at that time. However, life in the forest itself was fraught with danger, and in such conditions both parents fell ill. Seeing the rapid development of the disease and expecting death, they asked Pajin to take their children. However, Pajin is a traveling merchant. He refused and said he was not involved in charity work. Then his parents begged him to take the twins as a commodity. Pajin agreed. When they begged on the verge of death, offering him the little money they had, he couldn't refuse. He promised to keep an eye on them until they could sell them to someone good. No one is interested in cursed children. The money they gave him ran out, so feeding and taking care of them is a loss, and then he stumbled upon Diaz. He didn't mean to offend anyone, and he's really terribly sorry. Diaz agreed and said he would take these children. He will give the dragon parts to cover Pajin's expenses and take care of the children. Diaz thought that he resisted the idea of buying them, but when he thinks that they have nowhere else to go, that's another story. And so, he will make these twins his subjects, although it is more correct to say his family. After a while, leaving the plains, Pajin was happy and said that Master Diaz was his best customer of all time, because they had completely sold out everything, and there was nothing better than simple-minded customers. As a result, Diaz thought that they had placed orders for the next deal, and also sent out announcements about recruiting people for the feudal land completed their first deal with Pajin without any problems. Suddenly, Diaz walked up to the twins and lifted them in his arms at once. He happily asked the girls how old they were. These two are too thin, so now they will make sure that the girls eat right. The man asked about the girls' favorite food and said he could try to make it for them. He asks about their favorite song or fairy tale. Then he asked if the girls liked toys and then asked again about their names. The girls didn't answer. If their parents loved them so much that they abandoned their home for them, then of course these children will also love their parents, which means that they should cherish the names that their parents gave them. 
the man asked if that meant they didn't have names, he thinks that means he'll have to name them all over again. Despite the way he looks, he has a lot of experience naming children. He asks what names to give him. Suddenly, the girls were scared and said no because they don't want this. The girls introduced themselves as Senai and Achen. Diaz says he and Klaus have to sort out these items, so while they're doing that, Aruna and Grandma Maya will help them put on new clothes. He also asked the girls to cook food. Klaus told Diaz that he was surprised. He didn't know that Diaz got along well with children. The man said that before the war he was a kind of foster parent for some orphans. He also looked after a newborn baby. Klaus asked, that's when they gave the names. Diaz said there seemed to be about 10 of them. When he went to war, he put them with the person who took care of them with him. He hopes that everything is fine with them. After a while, they returned to all the residents. At this time, beautiful hairstyles were braided for the girls, which are braided by the inhabitants of the plains. Aruna said that when the girls grow up, they will be able to do it themselves. Diaz went up to the girls and said Senai and Achen really like new hairstyles. The girls showed their jewelry and said it was very beautiful. Diaz agreed and thought that it looked like they had opened up now. Aruna then called Senai and Ahen to come to her. The girl gives them jewelry and says that in the ancient language, the name Senai means beautiful as the moon, and the name Achen means sacred moon. She does not know what their parents meant by calling them that, but she is sure that they were closely related to the moon, and therefore he gives them precious stones called Yua. They are said to contain the power of the moon, so girls should take care of them. Ten days have passed since then. It seems that Senai and Achen still carry the grief of losing their parents, but nevertheless, they took the first step in overcoming it, and their smiles light up the village and happy voices echo. Suddenly, the girls felt something and started looking at me. Aruna told Diaz that someone was approaching and coming from the east, a man on horseback. After a while, Diaz stood on the plain and waited for the approaching man. Aruna used magic to hide in the fog. Then the girl warned Diaz that the man had arrived here. She looked at the elderly man and said that his soul was white, but there was no hostility. The man gets to Diaz and then gets off his horse and says that he apologizes for coming without warning. The man said that his name was Camelot, and he came as a representative of the Duke of Kazdex. Lord Eldon Kazdex wants to meet with Lord Diaz and he is already on his way. If he wants, he can bring him to his house. Diaz said they would meet here. The man says he will deliver Diaz's message to his lord. Diaz thought that Eldon Kazdex must be a lover of women who started a civil war. He cannot allow such a person to reach the village of Iluk. After a while, they saw a large wagon. Aruna didn't understand what it was. She said that the man's soul is bright blue and the people around him are mixed, but there is not a single red one. The man said his name was Eldon Kazdex, but Diaz could just call him Eldon. He has heard stories about the legendary hero Diaz, which is why he is so fascinated by the man. He said that was why he wanted to meet him and get to know him. He wouldn't do anything to offend him, so he asked Diaz not to get angry. Diaz told Eldon that he was not crazy, but he had to apologize for being very rude to his man. Eldon said there was no need for formalities with them. He says it's a pleasure just to get to know Diaz. Then Eldon asks what kind of girl is there on the side. Eldon said that she hides very well, but he has excellent ears and nose, so he noticed her, and also she has the same kind smell as Diaz. Aruna makes a decision and appears. Eldon asks Aruna if she is Ajin. The girl says that she is from the Oni people, who are born with this horn. She has never heard the term Ajin, so she doesn't know how to answer it. Eldon says that Ajin has people like humans, except for the people themselves. Beastmen, mermaids, they are all Ajin. Aruna asked if this was really the case. In this case, it can be called Ajin. Eldon then asks if he has a child with Aruna. Aruna said she wants to have ten children. Diaz also took two orphans, whom she thinks Eldon would have named Ajin. Eldon shouted that Diaz has a wife, Ajin, and children, Ajin. 
He called Daya's a kindred spirit. Suddenly, Eldin's ears grew larger, and he also grew a trunk. Eldin lifted Daya's with his trunk. Aruna and Daya's were surprised, saying that this could not be and Eldin was Ajin. When Eldin was still a little boy, in order to show the will to fight and attract more volunteers to the royal capital, stories about heroes were told, but stories about heroism turned into a theatrical play. This was the first time he had heard about it. The hero Daya's fulfilled the last request of his parents to defeat the strong and protect the weak. He forced the nobles to change with his fist. There was such a story. The nobles found this problematic, so public performances began to be covered up, and then they were completely banned. This caused people to be outraged. The tablets with the stories that were the subject of these speeches were distributed from person to person. They even reached the territory of Kazdex, separated from the capital. The catch in the story he heard was that most of it was forged and not a word about a noble on the battlefield. Eldon said that of course he was not going to take history at face value, but people like veterans, merchants who traded on the battlefields, home tutors, everyone who met Diaz on the battlefield had only words of praise. That's why he began to admire Diaz. The man said that Eldon is a semi agin born of a human agin bond. His father is the former feudal Lord Kazdex in Kaz. His mother is a servant from the elephant race, named Niha. When his body changes, he loses a lot of strength. His unstable physical condition can only be supported by the care he receives from his wives. If there were no walls between the races, then everyone would live in harmony, so Eldon wanted to build such a society. Then the son of the feudal lord began to use his social status to protect the Ajans from behind the scenes. Aruna said there was one thing she would like to ask. She asked why Nkaz had not enslaved Eldon like the rest of the Ajin. Even if he were his child, the half Ajin child is still Ajin. She asked that Nkaz wanted to enslave all the Ajins. Camelot said it was true that Eldon would be treated like a servant like a Niha. However, Inkaz's wife was a woman named Jania. The two already had an older son named Johnny. This boy looks like Inkaz like him, had a lousy temper because of his ugly appearance. Inkaz didn't think much about Johnny, who looked like him, so when the handsome Eldon was born in human form, he was very interested. He stated that Eldon was probably his child in order to gain political power. Diaz realized that this was a hilariously disgusting story. He hated a child who looked like him and preferred a child who didn't look like him. And the fact that he couldn't feel love at all was terrible. Diaz said he heard there was talk of a civil war. Camelot said that Eldon just wanted to protect the people he loved. After a fierce war, Eldon defeated Nkaz and his men. Although an imposter, he declared himself a feudal lord from the possessions of Kazdex. Eldon asked Diaz for forgiveness. He said that Diaz is the man who married Ajina, whom he recently met. Since he married Ajina, his children will also be Ajina. Diaz said that in his village, people and Ajins are already living in peace. He thinks it would be great if this scene could spread further. That's why he will support them and cooperate as much as he can. He told Eldon that his dream was really sublime. After a while, Diaz and Eldon talked about the food supplies on each other's territory. Eldon turned to Diaz and said that if the men are not able to store more food, he thinks it will be a problem. If the population of his village is still growing, then if he does not establish food production, then their products will not be enough. Winter will come sooner or later, so it will be bad if they don't start preparing immediately. Diaz thought that was what he had advised them to do. Eldon's words as a leader and feudal lord were a reason for urgency. He decides that for now they will try to make a field for sowing. Before the war he was engaged in agriculture, so he will show everyone everything he can do. He needs to create one or two ideal fields for the harvest. Then Diaz and Aruna return home, where Mimu, Senai and Achen are waiting for them. The girls saw Diaz and started shouting that the man promised to return immediately, but eventually deceived them. Then Senai and Achen were already asleep in their bed. Aruna said they were finally sleeping. The girls have been frolicking for so long, 
so she doesn't understand where they got so much strength from. Diaz thought these kids were just running an awful lot. Until now, he had thought that this peaceful village was a lie. One day, Achen screamed that Senai had eaten her potatoes, and Senai cried that Achen did not forgive her. Diaz tried to calm them down. Diaz thought that their sibling rivalry was too strong. There were a lot of crying incidents, nighttime incidents, and the next morning even Aruna was surprised. The girls also suddenly had a high fever. Aruna took care of the girls all night. Suddenly, Senai started crying and calling for her mom. Aruna cried in response. Diaz thought that those days, which continue to be hard, they will take care of the girls. As they overcame these incidents, Senai and Achen's attitude improved and smiles appeared on their faces again. After a while, Aruna felt the intrusion. She said there were a lot of people, and they were coming from the southeast. Diaz asked if the girl was sure that these were Eldon's inhumans. The girl said that Eldon had already gone home. He also went in a different direction, and at this hour, as a rule, guys from dark companies wander around. So, most likely, thieves or bandits. Diaz said that even if it was night, he would still go and take a look. He asked Aruna to stay and guard everyone, but the girl said she would go too. Aruna said that today is the new moon. If Diaz has no one to rely on, he won't be able to find them in the grass. Her magic should be enough if Klaus looks after the house. Suddenly Klaus woke up and felt that someone had called his name. Diaz said he understood and then told Aruna to go with him and give him her power. The mercenary reflected that the wealthy members of the Oni race have a lot of Mimu heads and they can live off the income from them. He understood that those who go hunting are poor people who lack wealth. And before getting married, men collect a fee for a woman. The man also knew that the fastest and easiest way to get rich is to hunt bandits. But bandits rarely appear around these places. The mercenary thinks it's strange to try so hard because of the land, which has nothing but grass. He assumed that these people had a purpose. The man turns around and asks if there are really people in this place. He says there aren't even any trees nearby. A guy comes up to the man and tells him to stop talking. The guy claims that he paid a lot of money to hire mercenaries. He says that if they don't stop talking about unnecessary things, then they will have to return the money. The man raises his hands and says that he understood everything. The man claims that they will do everything in the best possible way. He asks if there is a reason why they have to do it at night. The guy is wondering if the mercenaries know about the hero Diaz. He says that Diaz is the type of opponent who can fight on the front line in broad daylight and win. The guy thinks that Diaz might suddenly attack them. The guy only demands that the mercenaries deal with a guy named Eldon. He was informed that this guy was in the meadows for a meeting with Diaz. The mercenary asks if there will be a fee for him. The guy says that he will pay 100 silver coins for Eldon and 10 gold coins for Diaz. The mercenary looks at the guy in amazement. Then he raises the torch and commands his men to go forward and him. He says Diaz will be their biggest catch in a long time. The mercenary offers his men to end all this and return to the city with huge bags of coins. The mercenary peers into the darkness and notices a light that was approaching in their direction. The man did not understand why the red color appeared in the dark. Suddenly, an arrow flies at one of the mercenaries. The man is swearing because the arrow hit Lyle. He is unhappy that the surprise attack was revealed to him. The man points his hand forward and says that the arrows are in the area of the red light. The leader of the mercenaries shouts to his men to throw away the torches and start shooting bows. He points at the red light. The red light keeps moving. The man gets into a fighting stance as he notices that the red light has disappeared. Suddenly, an arrow flies at one of the mercenaries. He's screaming in pain. The mercenary leader asks where the attack is coming from. The leader of the mercenaries was amazed at the skill of their opponent. He couldn't figure out how their opponent knew their location. The mercenary leader thought it would be an easy victory. He didn't want to admit that they had taken on an impossible task. The man then shouts to his men to start attacking too. 
He demanded that they make sure where their target was. All the mercenaries start shooting. The leader of the mercenaries says that if they find out where their opponent is, then they can win. The mercenaries heard a voice ahead. The mercenary leader smiled. He points his sword forward and shouts for his men not to miss the opportunity to capture the enemy. One of the mercenaries asked where their opponent was. A second later, all the mercenaries received a strong blow and scattered across the field. The mercenary leader stopped. He only heard the screams of his subordinates. He couldn't understand how all his men were defeated at the same time. He assumes that there was something more terrible there. The leader of the mercenaries is shouting for his men to remain vigilant. He says that besides the archers, they have several other enemies. The leader of the mercenaries says that there are even more people on their side. He demands that his subordinates form up in battle formation and wait. His subordinates did so. But they were also hit hard and they scattered across the field. The mercenary leader noticed a green light in the dark. He was trying to figure out what was going on. Then he assumed that it was Ajin. The man began to swear and demand from the monster that he show himself. A huge dark figure appears right in front of the mercenary. The man manages to put the blade forward and block the blow. He saw Diaz. He realized that it was Diaz when he saw his blue eyes, heavy armor, and a two-handed axe. Diaz kicked the man. The mercenary leader started cursing again. At that moment, he thought that Diaz was worth more than a hundred gold coins. At this time, the guy who ordered Diaz was running through the woods trying to hide. He couldn't believe that the mercenaries had been defeated so easily. He was panicking that he might be noticed. The guy ran to the tree and disappeared behind it. Suddenly, he felt something strange and fell to the ground screaming and cursing. The guy is angry. He blamed Diaz for everything. He wondered why Diaz hadn't dealt with him right away. He couldn't read Diaz. The guy swore that one day he would deal with him. Diaz wanted to tell the people with the torches that they were on the offensive now, but they continued to mindlessly attack, so the fight ended. While this was happening, an enemy arrow scratched Aruna's face and the wound began to bleed, so Diaz got angry. Ultimately, they did not receive any new injuries. The bandits were injured and some were left with serious injuries. Diaz was upset that one of the bandits had escaped, but the man didn't think it was worth pursuing. Diaz and his assistants confiscated weapons from the bandits. Diaz lectured them on how stupid the bandits' actions were, no matter how they saw it, before deporting them from the plains. Aruna asked if deportation would be too light a punishment. She was unhappy. But Diaz believed that everything was fine, since they had no victims. Diaz promised not to give the bandits if they try to do something on their territory again. Aruna said that hunting bandits is a good job. She believed that with her help, you can quickly earn a lot of money. The girl says they could get money from the headman. She also offered to exchange the confiscated weapons for money. Diaz wondered if they would be able to get money for the worn out weapons. Diaz knew that iron was a valuable material on the plains. Aruna said that besides their value as weapons, they can be melted down into tools. That's why she argued that they should sell everything they received. Aruna could not say that her parents lived in prosperity. Therefore, her dream was to hunt bandits. Diaz looked at the girl and remembered that before meeting him, Aruna earned her living by patrolling the plains and hunting. Diaz remembered that hunting bandits would be the fastest and easiest way to make money. Diaz also knew that bandits were rare on these grass plains, so it was difficult to catch a large number of bandits. Suddenly, Aruna's horn lit up. The girl recalls that when she felt Diaz arriving at them in a horse-drawn carriage, her heart began to beat faster. Then the girl decided that bandits would finally appear. But she immediately saw that Diaz was not a bandit. Diaz learned that Aruna was able to sense his movements. The girl then thought that Diaz was just a refugee who had been thrown out of their carriage. She thought that the man would not survive. Then the next day, the girl went to check on Diaz while on patrol. Diaz was lying on the ground with his eyes closed. Then Aruna couldn't say anything, looking at the man sleeping so carelessly. 
As a precaution, she decided to judge the soul. The girl thought that if the result turned out to be blue, then it would be a huge loss. Aruna says that if Diaz was a bandit, she would not have spared him by taking his goods and armor. Diaz was amazed by the fact that Aruna decided to wake him up and talk to him. The girl at that moment felt that they should talk. The girl didn't understand why she did it. As a result, Diaz ended up next to Aruna and he doesn't think that his choice was wrong, although he admits that there are times when they don't understand each other. Diaz was watching Aruna. She turned around and, blushing, asked him why she wanted to enter into a relationship with him. Diaz turned to Aruna and asked what had happened. He didn't understand anything. At that moment, the girl came up to him and kissed him on the cheek. Then Aruna stepped back and walked in the opposite direction from Diaz. The man called out to Aruna. The girl was embarrassed and ran forward. Diaz sighed and ran after the girl. He asked the girl to wait for him so that she wouldn't leave him behind. He was going to run after her, no matter how dark the night path was. He believed that Aruna would show him the way. Diaz was sitting in the carriage with Eldon. Eldon said that it is not easy to increase the population of the territory. He believed that they should provide a large supply of food and other materials. Eldon says that if something happens, there will immediately be a shortage and it will be hard for them. Eldon argued that winter would come soon and they should prepare. Diaz agreed that they should avoid not only situations like famine among the population. Diaz was aware of the fact that the population is starving, which means that Aruna and the children will experience hunger in a similar situation. Diaz confidently says that for everyone's sake, he will hunt even more and cook a lot of dried meat. Eldon argues that such a similar diet will cause harm to health. He says that they also need to stock up on grain and, if possible, vegetables. Diaz thinks about plowing in the meadow. He asks if they should start cultivating the fields. Eldon asks if Diaz is really going to cultivate the fields. He believes that it will be difficult for them on these lands. Eldon says that so far many people have tried to clear these lands for arable land, but they did not succeed, since only grass can grow on such soil. Diaz says that despite this, he will try as much as it takes. He says they should try to find out. Eldon says he understood everything. He promises that he will support Diaz with all his might, helping him achieve success. Diaz wakes up and opens his eyes. He quietly leaves the tent so as not to wake the sleeping girls and stretches. Diaz approaches the well near which Aruna was standing. He greeted Aruna. The girl blushed and greeted the man in return. The old ladies who were standing next to her smiled and said that Aruna was in a good mood. They ask if anything joyful happened last night. Klaus runs up to Diaz and tells him that he met with an unusual type of beast during the morning patrol. Klaus shows the bat. He tells me that they were climbing in a pack and one of them attacked him. He was forced to knock her down and the rest of the flock flew away. Diaz says they're bats. He had never seen anything like it. Klaus says that he has never seen such a kind of creature either. Diaz says they need to be on their guard. Klaus listens to Diaz. Diaz notices that the day is quite clear. Their community decided to have breakfast outside. Diaz talked to everyone during the meal and asked if anyone had any needs or health problems. He was told that no one has any particular problems. Maya's grandmothers said they were healthier and more cheerful than before. Diaz suggested that this was due to Aruna's medicinal herbs. They ate them daily and were cleansed in a therapeutic bath. Thanks to this, their health has improved. Diaz thought that a huge amount is consumed in the village of Iluk, therefore, in the village, the tribe uses them even more often. Diaz turns to Aruna and asks where she gets so many medicinal herbs from. The girl is responsible for collecting them in the vicinity and acquiring them through transactions with merchants, but mostly it increases the amount by growing. Diaz asks if this means that there are fields of medicinal herbs in the villages of the tribe. Aruna talks about how they grow plants in pots so that they can be transported. She claims that they do not know when they will have to leave the land so they cannot maintain the fields. 
Diaz says he wants to cultivate fields in the meadow. He says that if they can harvest, they will live more peacefully. The man asks if he is right. Diaz says that if the girl can, then he would like her to teach him the way to grow medicinal herbs. He believes that the girl will be able to make a good allowance for cultivating the field. Aruna says she doesn't know much information about this method. Aruna says he should ask the head. Diaz goes to the head of the tribe, they content. The head says that it is impossible to cultivate fields in this place. The tent does not know why crops do not grow in these meadows at all. The tent says that in the past the ancestors cultivated the fields in a special way, but during the war the method was lost. Diaz says the tent could tell him about growing medicinal herbs. He claims that he wants to try to do it anyway. The tent says there's not much to tell. He claims that there is nothing complicated about it. The tent holds out a leaf fertilizer stone and says that if you use it, everything will turn out well. The tent tells about the manufacturing process of medicinal herbs and seeds. Diaz examines the stones and realizes what he cannot say, it is a difference in culture or values. The head says that the sown cultivated field is completely unsuitable. He says that when they tried to grow potatoes and beans in pots, they grew until the leaves appeared and then withered and became infertile. The chapter assumes that the forest dwellers know something. Diaz asks about the forest dwellers. The chapter says that forest dwellers know about fields, plants, and forests. He had heard that if a forest dweller waved his hand, any wasteland would become a land overflowing with greenery. But he had never seen anything like it. The head says that they will cooperate as much as possible to cultivate the fields. He asks Diaz to tell them the secret of the method, if they still succeed. He says that for them, cultivating fields in this field is a dream. Diaz strokes the lamb and smiles. He says he doesn't mind telling a secret. The man says that from the very beginning he planned to tell everything about the method. He also promises to bring a mountain of potatoes with him. The head smiles and says that he expected something like this from Diaz Blue. He says they will all hope for his success. The head then says that they will be expecting the birth of Aruna and Diaz's child. He says he will give you the necessary medicinal herbs. Diaz asks if this is necessary. The head says that this is a very valuable thing. He says he will give Aruna the medicine. The head begins to convince Diaz that this is a necessary thing since Diaz considers this thing suspicious. Diaz returns to Klaus. The guy meets Diaz. Then the girls notice them and immediately run up. They are happy that Diaz returned much earlier. They greeted him. Diaz happily announces that he is now at home. He gets down in front of the girls. They notice the bag in the man's hands and ask what's in it. The man opens the bag and shows the gems inside. He asks if the stones are beautiful. The girls look at the stones unimpressed and say that there is nothing special about them. They were bored. They say they don't need that kind of thing. There were sheep standing next to the girls. They looked at each other. Then the girls ran to play with the sheep. Aruna meets Diaz. She asks what kind of stones the man brought. Diaz was surprised by such reactions as he considered the stones beautiful. Aruna says that if you look closely, you can see that there is no magic power in these stones. Then she remembers that the man does not feel the magic power. The girl knew that whether the stone has magical power or possesses a vessel of accumulation of magical power, if a person is engaged in magic, he will be able to feel just by looking. The girl remembered that the stones look like precious stones, but since they do not have magical power, we can say that they are just simple stones. Diaz is amazed by Aruna's knowledge. He wonders if the stones distinguish between Senai and Achen. Aruna says both girls are very good for their age. Sometimes she feels a little magical power. The girl says that if Senai and Achen are trained, they will one day be able to become magicians stronger than the head. Diaz looks at the girls with a smile and thinks that they have amazing talent. The man was thinking at this moment that whatever lifestyle these children choose, he is sure that their future will undoubtedly be bright. He believed that they would one day become great magicians. Suddenly, the girls screamed that someone was approaching them. 
they shouted for everyone to prepare to defend themselves. A flock of bats is flying towards the tribe. Diaz pulls out a gun and tells Aruna and the children to hide in the yurt. They ran forward together with Klaus. Klaus thought that the morning bats had come to avenge their brother. He thought the goals were too small, and there were a lot of them. He understood that it was ineffective to fight with an axe and a spear. Diaz attacked the bats. Klaus was helping him. For a long time, they brandished their weapons in order to slay all the bats. One of the bats flew up to Diaz and grabbed the axe with its mouth. Diaz realized that this was the boss of the pack. Klaus ran up to Diaz and hit the pack boss. Then they continued to deal with the bats. The bats were very agile. Klaus and Aruna shouted at Diaz not to give up. The man decisively swung the axe and struck the boss of the pack. Aruna said that monsters are sensitive to sound, which is why they are called Makakushi bats. She says that it is necessary to strengthen your voice in order to defeat them. Diaz smiles and says that Aruna helped them out. He thanks the girl. He says that the scream was so amazing that he was already scared. Aruna apologizes and says that large individuals rarely approach, so she was careless. Diaz asks about the monsters. The girl is silent and looks at the man. Diaz smiles and then apologizes and says his ears are still hard to hear. Aruna smiles and comes closer to Diaz. She whispered something in his ear. Diaz looked at the girl in surprise as he still did not hear what the girl said. While the man was trying to call Aruna and ask her to repeat, Klaus was lying on the ground at that time, as he had lost consciousness. Diaz was grinding stones. He puts his hand into the bowl and checks if he has succeeded in crushing the stones. The man leans back and rejoices that he has finally finished. Five days after starting to grind the leaf fertilizer stones received from the head of the tribe, he finally finished grinding all the stones. Diaz understood that now they could start cultivating the field. Diaz understood that first of all, he needed to clear the meadow and plow the land. Aruna called out to the man. She said that someone was approaching them from the east. Diaz and Aruna moved towards the approaching guests. Diaz was thinking about the reaction Aruna felt. The girl felt a lot of people with horses. She also said that something that was neither human nor horse was approaching them. Diaz was going to go and check it out, but Aruna said she would not let Diaz go alone until she found out who was approaching them. Diaz thought that he would feel better if Aruna went with him. Aruna screams that it should be visible soon who is approaching them. The man takes out binoculars and looks into them. He opens his eyes wide when he recognizes Camelots. The man turns to Aruna and says that Eldon's servant is approaching them. The girl asks the man not to exaggerate if he knows him. Diaz then tries to make out what is behind him. He sees white animals. The man understands that these are buffaloes. He sees a lot of escorts and luggage. He suggests that this was a strange reaction. Diaz recognizes a white animal that looks like a black buffalo. He thinks it's a good name that can be easily remembered. Aruna carefully examines the wagons, and then she says that in the second carriage she saw a small moving shadow in the luggage. She assumes that this creature is monitoring the situation from the outside. Diaz looks at the girl questioningly, he wonders what it could be. He decided to try to ask what was in Camelot's cargo. At this time, small mice were jumping in the cart. The mouse with glasses was thinking what happened when they were caught hunting. They were able to get into a wagon going into the desert. The mice thought that somehow they would be able to return to their native places. The mouse with glasses decided to take some beans. Another mouse decided to ask what she was doing, which scared her very much. The mouse with glasses says that he decided to take some food. The second mouse tells her that it will only get in the way. The mouse with glasses asks uncertainly how they can do without food on a long journey. They don't know when they'll be able to get off the wagon and get food. She assures the other mouse that they should prepare well. The mouse asks if Ama still hasn't noticed that the wagon is heading west instead of south into the desert. She says that Ama has a bit of a mind, so you could guess that their real goal is to deal with Diaz. 
The mouse says that they will deal with Diaz and show their strength, as well as restore the honor and pride of the people of the desert. Ama doesn't believe it. She lent her mind to everyone in order to return to the desert. She cooperated because she was ordered to come up with a plan to infiltrate a wagon traveling into the desert. Ama says that their opponent was able to defeat the dragon, which means that he is stronger than the dragon. She convinces everyone that they can't beat Diaz. All the mice started discussing that they were a desert people and a strong clan. They all began to speak negatively about the human race, believing that defeating Diaz would be the right thing to do. The mice convince Ama that they are of a higher rank. They recall a man who told them to return to the desert with food. The cart is stopped and Ama falls because of this. Diaz approaches the cart. He is immediately greeted and thanked for coming out to meet them. Camelot says that the goods promised by Eldon have been delivered. All the mice started to get angry. At this time, Diaz is happy that Camelot's has arrived. He apologizes for the rush and says he wanted to ask something. One of the mice wants to jump out of the cart. Ama tries to stop her and says that this is the opponent they cannot defeat. Ama pushes the mouse away and falls down. Diaz hears a strange sound from the luggage. He asks if there is anything there. Suddenly, mice jump out of the cart and are about to attack Diaz, thinking that he is defenseless. Diaz is surprised that the mice are talking. Aruna pulls out a weapon and scares away all the mice. Diaz looks at the girl in surprise. She says the man is too careless. He asks if the girl is talking about skill. Aruna says they can't sort it out on their own, as it may be Camelot's property. The mice start attacking Diaz again, speaking negatively about Aaron. The man puts his axe forward and says that Aruna is a wonderful girl. He says he won't forgive the insults. Aruna blushes. Camelot asks why they have mice in the cart, and then he asks why they're talking. He demands that his people catch all the mice. All the mice were trapped in bags. They tried to break free and screamed, cursing at the human race. Camelot's bowed and apologized to Diaz. He wanted to express his apologies more appropriately. Diaz says a man doesn't need to apologize. Camelot says that mice are a people living on their territory, so he can't leave until he apologizes. Diaz looked at the man in surprise and assumed that mice were similar to beastmen. Camelot explained the differences between beastmen. He said that they all have a certain culture and can speak words. Diaz recalls a myth from his childhood. He remembers God's phrase and believes that mice are also half-humans. Camelot says that these mice belong to the race of the big-eared jumping mouse tribe. They claim to be the people of the desert. Diaz is surprised that there is a desert on the territory of Eldon. He had never heard of a kingdom in the desert. Camelot continues and talks about the fact that mice call the desert their homeland. He says their approximate location. Diaz gets more serious when he thinks about the fact that they met a slave hunter. The mice continued to jump into the bags and scream. Diaz assumed that Eldon had protected them and promised them to return the desert. But they didn't believe Eldon. Although he did so, Eldon was still a great man as he carefully protected his clan. Camelot says that Eldon, having become a lord, promised to return the mice to their homeland. At this moment, Aruna says that Camelot's used to be white, but now it has become blue. She believes that they can forgive him without compensation, since he is now blue. Then the girl remembers that the mice were bright red. She says they won't be so tactful next time. Camelot looks at Diaz intently. The man smiles and says that he does not need to apologize for this incident. He says that even if a man insists on his own, he will accept an apology. Diaz says that mice have serious behavioral problems. He's not sure if they'll be able to be tactful next time. He thinks to give the mice recommendations and provide their punishment to Kamalatsu. Kamalat smiles and obeys. He thanks Diaz. Aruna and Diaz are smiling. A beastman approaches Camelot and says that they have finished their inspection. He claims that it is difficult to confirm by smell this time. The servant says that their smell has spread everywhere. In addition, there is a lot of spice in the cargo. Camelot says he understands everything. He's going to check the cargo. 
he personally inspected each carriage. As a result, nothing unusual was found. This is the end of the check. The mice were sent back to Eldon. They should have received the appropriate punishment after questioning the reason why they attacked Diaz. Diaz turned to Camelots and asked him about spices. He also asks about the transportation of household tools. Camelot says he forgot to explain this to Diaz because of the unnecessary noise. He says that all the tools have been prepared. Then he handed over an envelope and asked Diaz to familiarize himself with the spices. The letter said that if he did not have enough tools, Eldon would provide more. Eldon also hoped that Diaz would like the spices. Finally, Eldon talks about the future territorial trade below and about their last meeting. The man wished good luck and waited for a new meeting. At the end of the letter, it was written that the current items were a gift, so Diaz did not need to pay for them. He wanted to do this as proof of their friendship. Camelots approaches Diaz and says that Eldon sent the prepared building materials, mentioning the stables. Diaz was surprised. The servants who stood behind Camelots said that Diaz need not worry since they were sent in connection with the construction. Diaz was worried because he received so many different things and did not provide anything in return. Camelots asks if Diaz would like to try to hold the reins. He points to the horse cart and says that it is now Diaz's property. Aruna looks at the horses with admiration. Camelot says that with the coachman's guidance, Diaz will be able to manage them immediately. Aruna approaches Diaz and asks if all this is true. The man confirms that this is true. The man does not have time to say anything to Aruna as she runs up to the horse and rejoices that they have acquired them. Diaz did not know that horses were the main means of transportation and transportation for the tribe. The man suggested that owning a large number of horses is evidence of wealth and courage. Aruna's family couldn't afford something like that. Diaz looked at the girl and wondered if there was a time when Aruna wasn't worried about her family. Aruna turns around and says that since childhood she had a dream of becoming a woman from a tribe with horses. She did not expect that they would get horses so quickly with Diaz's help. Diaz doesn't have time to say anything, as Aruna starts hugging him. She thanked Diaz and said she would take care of the horses. He asked if Aruna had calmed down, but she kept hugging him. At that time, Ama was sitting in the carriage and wondering if everything was over. She thought they would find her. The mouse decided to get out of the cart, but she couldn't do it because something was blocking her way. Her sister runs up to Achen and asks her to look at the tea leaves. She says she will share it with her sister. The girl assumes that seeds and tea are the same thing. Her sister agrees with her. Then the girls remember that their parents also loved tea. Kairuch's grandmother tells Diaz to hold the reins tight. He claims that the buffalo is already used to field work. The old lady says she understood and is moving forward. The man was working with a plow. He was amazed by the possibilities of this tool because thanks to it, the cultivation of the field was progressing well. After a few hours of work, Diaz decided to take a break. Kairuchi says that it is necessary to leave the land for a few days. She suggests continuing after three days. Diaz was thinking about the process of plowing the field. He was comparing his field and Grandma Tara's field. Kairuchi suggests to see if anything will grow on the field this time. In the meantime, she suggests digging up a reservoir. Diaz asks about the reservoir. Grandma talks about how the reservoir system works in their village. The grandmother then asks if Diaz has understood how the reservoir works. The man says that he needs to make a reservoir. Grandma praises the man. The girls run up to Diaz and ask if he has finished plowing the fields. He responds with something that still works. He is interested in what the girls wanted to ask. The girls hesitated for a while, and then they said that Aruna was cooking dinner, so the man needed to come back. Diaz thanks the girls for inviting him. The man picks up the girls in his arms and one of them asks if Diaz will be upset if nothing happens with Paul. He replies that he won't be too upset. Then the girl sadly looks up and asks if he will be upset if he finds out that they are hiding something. 
The man looks at the girl for a while and then says that the chance that he will be upset is too small. He says that everyone has little secrets. The girls silently sink to the ground and run away. The man looks after them, not understanding what happened. The man continued to worry and asked the girls about the secret several times, but he never got an answer. Aruna also did not understand what kind of secret the girls were hiding. Everyone in the village asked the girls about the secret, but they didn't tell anything. Diaz was very worried. He wondered what could have happened. He watched them for a while, but didn't notice anything unusual. The man decided to forget about this case. Aruna reported that three days had passed, so the man could start sowing. She handed over the necessary seeds and told about their effect. The girl assumed that these seeds should have been suitable for testing the success of the field. The man thanked the girl. Diaz thought that thanks to fertilizers, all the seeds should have been quickly forgiven. He was looking forward to this moment. Klaus approached Diaz and informed him that Camelot's group had completed the construction of the stable. Diaz couldn't believe that Camelot's and his minions could build a stable so quickly. Diaz learned that the stable was quickly built thanks to the processed material, which simply had to be assembled on site. It was an easy and preferred method of construction. Diaz thanked Camelot's. The man says he was just following Eldon's instructions. Diaz says that he prepared the material not as payment, but as an expression of feelings. He points to the side with his hand and says that he wants Camelot's to accept them. Camelot's asks about the material. Diaz says these are earth dragon materials. Everyone gets scared. Camelot's refuses and says that he will not be able to accept such a gift. One of the acolytes asks what Diaz is up to. The man smiles and then apologizes. As a result, Camelot's and his servants treated the gifts as things received for safekeeping. They were able to accept them only with the signing of a power of attorney. The next morning Camelot's announced that they were leaving. Diaz thanked the man for his help. Aruna was watching everything from the sidelines. At that moment, the girls who were upset were clinging to her. Diaz recalls how the girls were embarrassed by Camelot's for the first time. It seems to him that over time they got used to him, so they got upset. Aruna asks the girls to stop crying. She says they'll need to take care of the horses later. Aruna claims that if the girls don't hurry, the horses will start crying, get thirsty and get hungry. Diaz looks at the field and thinks about its condition. He notices that the sprouts have withered. Aruna approaches Diaz. The man smiles and says that he did not expect success. He suggests sowing again. The next day, the new crops also wilted. Aruna approached the man again. He turned around and assumed that there was little fertilizer. I decided to add a little more. The next day, the man added more fertilizer, but the crops still did not germinate. The man repeated the same thing, but the crops did not germinate. Aruna came up to Diaz again to support him, but the man just made a face and stood up. Diaz still thought it was worth adding more stone fertilizer. Aruna grabbed the man's hand and asked him to stop. She wanted him to rest. Aruna says that it is impossible to mix stone fertilizer of leaves in such quantities. She claims that it is impossible to cultivate fields in these meadows. Diaz agrees and says that sometimes the seeds don't germinate, but he decides that it's worth focusing on other things. Diaz and Aruna are returning home. The girls look after them and think about what to do. Achen said that she wanted to help Diaz, but she doesn't know what to do. At this moment, the girl takes out a small glass container. Suddenly, the girls heard a sound. Achen asked her sister if she had heard an unfamiliar voice asking for help. The girls decide to go and see where the sound is coming from. At that time, Ama was screaming in one of the huts. She asked for help. She assumed that it had been about a week. It was hard for her without water. Ama thinks that she should have asked Diaz for help when the man was carrying the box. The girls come into the hut. The mouse gets scared. The girls ask if there is anyone inside. Ama screamed for help. The girls realized that their guesses had been confirmed. Ama talked about what was in the box and couldn't get out. The girls said that they would get him out soon. 
The girl started trying to tilt the box, but it was too heavy. Ama asks if everything is okay. She assumes that the girls are trying to save her. He asks them not to overdo it and to call the adults. The girls say that all the adults are busy. Ama asks you to listen to her. He says he can take it a little longer. The girls say they're almost done. The girls throw off the extra bags and free Ama. The mouse screams that the girls saved him. He thanked them and said it was hard for him. The girls greet the mouse and introduce themselves. Ama also introduces herself in response and talks about where she comes from. At this time, Aruna saw that Diaz was continuing to plow the field. She demanded that he stop. The man thought that he would succeed this time. The girls were wondering why Ama was locked inside the box. They assumed that he was punished for a bad deed. Ama screams and says she didn't do anything terrible. She talks about how she got into the box. The girls ask how the mouse feels about Diaz. Ama says she has never spoken to Diaz. The girls look at each other. Then they decide to consult with Ama. They say they have a secret. Ama asked what secret the girls were hiding. She assumes that there is someone more suitable for this role. The girls say that no one in the village is suitable for this role. All their friends will tell the secret to Diaz. The girls tell me that Diaz cultivates the field every day, but he does not succeed. The girls say that the earth has no strength, so Diaz's methods don't work. They claim that they can do something about unsuitability, but they cannot do it for a person. The girls remember what their parents told them about the power of forest formation. They believed that people would start abusing this power if they found out. They told them that people should not see the moment of using force. But the girls wanted to help Dias. Ama wasn't human, so they were able to tell her everything. They asked what they should do. Ama asks if the girls can tell her a little more about this. The girls tell me everything. Ama asks the girls to wait. She asks what race the girls are. The girls confirmed that they are forest dwellers who protect and study the forest. Ama begins to recall all the information she knows about the forest people. She remembered that dying forest dwellers put their strength and knowledge into the seed. The girls say that they plant seeds in important places. Worried about the seeds, the forest dwellers gather together. Before death, Forest dwellers give their seed to a loved one in order to become a forest. Those who are entrusted with the seed protect and grow it to form a forest. The seed grows and becomes a tree like a tombstone. The girls compare trees with books in which they can gain knowledge. The forest people live in the forest to protect these trees. Ama felt that the girls had two powers. The first force accelerates the cultivation of trees and herbs, and the second power is the ability to create barriers. The mouse realized that these forces are needed to protect the forest. Ama asks if she is still suitable for the role of assistant. The girls say it fits because Ama is smart. Ama understood that the girls were still small and could not create a forest, but they could cover the forest with a small barrier. She still finds their powers amazing. Ama knew what would happen if the human race found out about the existence of such a force. She understood why the girl's parents had asked her to keep everything a secret. The only thing the mouse didn't understand was why the girls were living with Diaz. She thinks it's better to stay away from people. The girls say that at first they were afraid of Diaz. At first they thought of running away. He reminded them of dad, so they decided to stay. The girls say that Diaz is very kind. That's why they think they can tell him about the secret. They assume that they will not abuse force. Ama understood that the girls were facing a difficult choice. Ama asks if the strength of the forest dwellers is needed for a good field, since the strength of the earth is being stretched. The girls tell us that this place draws out all the forces of the earth. They talk about the pulling process. Ama suggests understanding the true nature of the pull and considering various responses. The girls say they don't know that. The girls think it's not a bad kid doing this. They talk about the terrible consequences of stretching. Ama begins to understand the essence of the pulling process. It seems to her that someone is causing a similar effect. But Ama thinks it's impossible. The mouse reflects on the soil and climatic conditions. 
Ama was tense because the question of how to use the barrier's power without revealing herself was still relevant. The mouse asks if the girls can use their powers secretly. The girls say they can't because Diaz is always on the field. The mouse suggests doing this in the middle of the night. They say that they are also asleep at this time and cannot wake up in time. The mouse suggests waking them up. He says he sees well at night. He claims that he can help them if they tell him where their house is. Ama suggests that their plan of action be decided immediately. She asks the girls to calm down. She says they might be exposed. At night, Ama tried to find the hut where the girls lived. She finds a hole in the wall and goes inside. The mouse immediately sees Diaz and gets scared. Then he sneezes, but Diaz did not wake up. The mouse thinks it was dangerous. The mouse finds the twins and tries to wake them up. She says they need to wake up and go to the field. The girls are waking up. Then they fall asleep again. The girls still wake up and go outside. Ama notices their agitation and asks what happened. The girls say they are scared and cold. The girls step forward and take out their parents' seeds. They say that mom and dad's seeds cheer them up, so they carry them with them all the time. Amy understood. They came to the field. The girls asked the mouse to wait. Ama examined the field created by Diaz. The girls took out the seeds and stood opposite each other. The girls began to conjure. They noticed that the seeds rose and sparkled. Ama was surprised. The girls continued to conjure. At that moment, the light spread around them, and then he disappeared again. The girls continued to conjure as Ama tried to understand what they were saying. The girls report that a good barrier has turned out. They started rubbing their eyes and said they wanted to sleep. The mouse asks if the girls have finished with the barrier. The girls went back to bed and fell asleep. They were talking in their sleep. The mouse was lying between the girls. She asked them to release her before anyone noticed. But the girls were already asleep. In the morning, a discussion was held in a tavern on the territory of the Castex in the city of Melangle. Everyone was discussing the fact that Eldon had gone to the royal capital, and the fact that he took a magic stone with him. One of the visitors says that if he gives a magic stone, he will have happy memories. Another visitor says that people rarely try to get close to half-humans. One of the tavern's patrons had heard that the dragon slayer had a half-human wife. He had heard that they loved each other. Visitors have heard that the dragon slayer has arrived from the east. They also heard that the eastern human race is famous for its hatred of humans. They also heard that Diaz had never heard of demi-humans until recently. The visitors discussed that the wife of the dragon slayer was the first person they met. They think Diaz fell in love with his wife and fell in love with other half-humans. The visitors laugh at the fact that even the dragon slayer could not defeat the woman. One of the visitors says that it was thanks to his wife that a friendly relationship was formed between Eldon and the dragon slayer. The semi-beast visitor assumes that she is from the rhino race. A visitor who looks like a deer asks if his friends have seen the sign made by the dragon killer about the recruitment of residents. One of the visitors says that he saw this sign, he remembers what was written on it. Then he says that several of the dog people race were interested. They also discussed the attack of big-eared jumping mice. He says that this attack was organized by the mastermind. When asked about the mastermind, the visitor tells that some person incited the mice to attack. Most of the visitors have not heard about the race of ape men. Therefore, everyone assumed that it was an excuse. They decided that a self-proclaimed race of ape men was in the territory. The man in the black cloak cannot understand what the beast people are talking about. He thinks they are easy to deceive because they are fools. No matter how much he showed the gold, they still wouldn't listen to him. As a result, the suspicious guy was only able to deceive the mice. But he didn't expect anything from them. But he was determined to deal with Diaz anyway. The two knights were discussing the fact that defectors from Diana's faction had appeared. One of the knights had heard that the Mai's faction had lost the Duke of Castax, who controlled the western trading area. They are thinking about who will be appointed to the throne. The knights were discussing Richard and Isabella's allies. 
They were also interested in finding out the truth about the royal family's bloodline. The knights were tense because of the fact that the further direction should change. They also heard that the king's second son is on good terms with Diaz. He talks about their friendship. The knight had heard that Diaz had become lord of the Meadows of Neutros. The second knight had heard a lot of interesting things about these lands. He was particularly attracted to the story of the curse. His interlocutor considers it a fairy tale. Suddenly, the commander runs up to the knights and informs them that Diana has led a significant number of soldiers. It seems to him that they went outside the capital. The knights ask why make so much noise if it's a common thing. The commander-in-chief reports that Diana took with her a huge number of soldiers and wagons. He believes that the war is starting again. The knights said that you can ignore it because someone else will figure it out. Aruna wakes up and sees the girls who were in disguise. Then she notices a mouse that wishes her a good morning. Jellant arrives at Dias. The man begins to understand what caused the screaming voices heard earlier. He was worried that it would be a repeat attack. It seems to him that Ama was bright blue, so Aruna said that there was no need to worry. Then the seeds of the crops sown in the field of the evening sprouted. He thought it was a natural incident. Diaz noticed a smooth circle on the field. Diaz also noticed that the additives in the soil were different in his field and in the field of grandmothers. He did not understand the reason for such an education. Jellant laughs and says it's an amazing story. Jellant says that there are very noisy birds flying on the field. Diaz asks if Jellant really understands other birds. He hears laughter in response. Jellant says that such things are impossible for her. Diaz frowns. He recalls the third incident when the twins messed up the warehouse. Diaz finished cleaning up the warehouse, but he was worried about the beans that had fallen out of the chest. Jellant laughs again and says that you can't throw beans out of the chest. Diaz realized that the bird's visit was the biggest incident for him all day. The man remembers how he picked beans and met a Jellant from the pigeon people on the way out. Jellant then asked why their community was so noisy. Jellant remembers his errand. He was supposed to deliver a letter from Eldon. Diaz had to confirm. Diaz does not understand Jellant at first, and then he goes down and opens the bag. There were three letters inside. The first is an apology. The second is a warning about the alarming movement. The third is about the sign about the recruitment of residents. They showed interest in it. Diaz raises his head and asks Jellant what little view means. He didn't know anything about it. Jellant said that among the people of human dogs, there is a big kind and a small kind. He explained the differences between them. Jellant said that small species are very clumsy. It seems to Jellant that the small species had difficulty working because of their clumsiness. Diaz will think about adopting this look. He decides to go and ask the others right away. Diaz approached Klaus and asked him what he thought of dog people. Klaus didn't mind. The others didn't mind either. Diaz decided to ask Aruna. He saw that she was still scolding the girls for the mouse in bed. The girls were delighted when they heard the news. Aruna said that they would no longer be able to teach in such an atmosphere. Diaz asks if the girls have said anything. Aruna says the girls didn't say anything about it anyway. Diaz suggests that there are reasons or they are hiding something. He believes that they have no bad intentions. Diaz suggests waiting. Aruna agrees. Diaz kneels down and asks how Ama ended up in this place. The mouse says it's going to be a long story. Diaz releases Jellant. He flew away with a letter that Diaz wrote. He has to deliver the letter in a day. Diaz wrote in a letter about AIM and the adoption of human dogs. Ama sat on Diaz's shoulder and talked about how she was counting on him now. Ama told me everything. At the end of her story, she decided that she would live in the village of Iluk. Diaz asked about the reason. Ama replied that she wanted to be with the twins. She was worried about them. She asked the man to let her stay. Diaz introduced Ama to everyone and asked for their opinions. Everyone didn't mind, except for Aruna. She looked sullen. The mouse asked Aruna to confuse her with other mice. Aruna still agreed, but set several conditions. 
so Ama became a member of the Iluk village. The man was inspecting the warehouse and noticed that some luggage was missing. He was looking for a barrel of wine. Ama says she has heard that a barrel of wine could be used for a welcome party. She suggests that we go and see as soon as possible. Diaz came out of the warehouse and saw that the barrel of wine had indeed been taken to the hall for the welcome party. Everyone started preparing for the holiday. Diaz did not understand when everyone decided to start, Aruna noticed the man's confusion and approached him. She asks if he is surprised. He asks when they managed to prepare so much. The girl claims that Diaz was just busy. She says that by her own decision preparations have begun. Diaz looks at the girl and she looks back at him. She then says that Diaz did not consult her and hid the wine. Aruna asks if it's the right thing to do. There were laws in the kingdom. Diaz was worried about alcohol being addictive. He doesn't know what the laws are in the village. But Aruna had just turned 15 recently, so he was worried about her health and hid the wine. Aruna says she's not angry at all because Diaz did it for her. The girl looks at the man and says it was a little revenge. Aruna blushes and says that she gets sad at such moments. She wants Diaz to tell her everything. Diaz apologizes and says he will listen to her. Diaz is talking about wine. The girl convinces him that he is talking nonsense. She claims that wine is healthy. Grandma lightly punches Diaz's back. The man asks what happened. Grandma asks them to help with the party. Diaz tried to justify himself, but his grandmother interrupted him and said that they had found a barrel of wine so they could have fun. New races and cultures are constantly emerging in the village of Iluk. Diaz decided to come up with his own rules to prevent riots. The next day, there was an unusual liquid for breakfast. The girl explained that it was kumis. She thought about what Diaz had said about alcohol, so she took a new drink to neighboring villages. Diaz realized that it was a very weak alcohol. He thought that in this case, it would be possible to give it to the child to drink a little. Aruna talks about the positive properties of kumis. It became clear to Diaz that the girl considered kumis alcohol, so she said that it was useful. But for him, alcohol is many times stronger. That is why their opinions did not coincide. Diaz and grandma were doing the sewing. At that moment, the twins ran up to them and showed that they had collected a lot of yamoshi. Diaz thanked the girls. The girls raised their hands and announced that they wanted to cultivate the field. The man said he didn't mind. He smiles and says that next time he will cultivate a small field. He says it's dangerous to place it too far away, so he suggests doing it near the horses. The girls thank Dias. In the evening, everyone gathered to discuss Grandma Celia's proposal. She believes that everyone agrees with Dias without really thinking. She also says that you need to think about what to do if opinions are divided. Grandma suggested choosing representatives in the group who would collect people's opinions and pass them on to Diaz. They will also have to express their opinions confidently. Everyone agreed, then continued the discussion. Everyone was able to discuss the rules in detail. Diaz was responsible for the decision. Representatives had to gather people's opinions in advance and attend meetings, as well as express their opinions. Ama, since she has an education, also decided to become a representative of a group of beastmen. Diaz and the rest of the villagers decided to stick to the rules. Human dogs will also have to choose their representative. The meeting continued until it ended with the adoption of important decisions. Aruna woke Diaz up and informed him that guests had arrived. He asked why they had arrived early in the morning. The girl said that she was asleep, so she did not notice the guests until they came close to the village. She said she would tell you everything on the way. The girl assumed that it was a human dog. She saw several people of various sizes. She wanted to assume something, but abruptly screamed that there was someone ahead. Aruna and Diaz were surprised to see an anaconda attacking human dogs trying to escape. The girl screamed that it was an anaconda. Diaz asks what it means, he hadn't heard about them bringing a monster. The girl says that the anaconda is chasing them. Aruna left her bow and arrows at home. 
At this moment, the anaconda grabs one human dog. Diaz and the others look on in horror. They were screaming for someone to help them. The man rushed forward. Aruna screamed. She asked him to stop because they didn't take their guns. The anaconda opened its mouth wide and tried to attack Diaz, but the man dodged and grabbed her. The snake began to writhe and Diaz held it tighter. As a result, Diaz was able to defeat the snake. Aruna runs up to the man and says that he acted too recklessly. The man apologizes. The human dog approaches the anaconda, opens its mouth and asks if one of them is okay. One of the human dogs comes out of the mouth and says that he is alive. Everyone is happy. The guest introduces herself as Canis. She talks about how, under Eldon's command, she looks after the little species and accompanies them as a leader. Canis talks about who is the applicant for resettlement. Canis says that clan names are very important. Aruna was doing a soul assessment at the time. She approached Diaz and told him that she had finished the assessment. She told me what she saw. Canis recalls that everyone from the small species planned to do some kind of work. She asks Diaz if he can provide them with a job. The human dog is looking at Diaz. The man begins to talk about where they need helpers. Diaz said the human dog can get to work. Diaz bends down. Aruna continues to look at the man, and Canis is surprised. Diaz introduces himself again and says he's glad to meet you. Aruna also bows down. Canis is amazed at this moment that they speak at the same level of gaze as human dogs. She thought Diaz was unusual. The dogs stand in a row and introduce themselves. First, the leader of the Masti clan introduced himself and gave his paw to Diaz. Diaz shook it and said he was glad to meet you. Then the chief of the Sidorio Bar Senji clan introduced himself. He informed about what they are ready to help the community with. Diaz also shook his paw and said it was nice to meet him. He also talked about who can help them. Diaz turns around and notices another human dog who immediately runs up to him and introduces himself as the leader of the Rehatagadofaniadisif Olsen Shepu clan. He says they want to take care of the horses. The man agrees and says that he will entrust him with horses and sheep. Diaz turns his head and notices that Aruna starts greeting everyone and introducing herself. The chiefs of each valve provided a report. There were a lot of guests, so everyone should be welcomed on occasion. Canis turns to Diaz and asks if the man was seriously going to make soldiers out of small species. She argued that it was better for them to run simple errands, as they were physically weak. The man, along with Canis and Aruna, approach Klaus. Diaz thanks him for the patrol. Klaus also thanks him in return for his work and asks who came with them. Diaz introduced the guests. Klaus greeted Canis. The girl also greeted the guy. They looked at each other admiringly for a while. At that moment, they felt something unusual. Aruna understood everything immediately, but Diaz did not understand anything. The dog people asked the grandmothers what they would do. Some of them accompanied Senai and Achen to collect stones. It seemed to Diaz that the stones had the power of fertilizer. It was thanks to fertilizer that the plants took strong roots and grew. Dog people also worked near the well. Diaz watched them and thought that it had been ten days since they had arrived at their place. Diaz looked at the girls and assumed that their parents had taught them how to use stones. They remembered this and began to cultivate the fields. Diaz noticed that Canis's concern about the awkwardness of human dogs did not cause difficulties. Diaz made suitable tools for them. Klaus shouted to the group to come up to him all at once. The dog people surrounded the man. Canis and Diaz were watching what was happening. All the human dogs rushed and started attacking Klaus. Diaz watched in surprise as they knocked Klaus to the ground and began to lick him. Klaus lost again. Diaz knew that Klaus was a veteran who was able to survive the war. After that, he defeated several generals and was nicknamed Klaus the Decapitator. He did not expect that he could be defeated in 10 days. Diaz saw that Canis was feeling anxious, and he was worried about it. He decided not to mention his territorial responsibilities as he decided that it was better to show them in practice. 
During the war, military dogs caused a lot of difficulties, so I decided that human dogs would be effective. But only robbers attacked the planes. Therefore, Diaz decided that the human dog would not have to fight dangerous enemies. There was a detachment in the tomb of the founding king of the kingdom of Sunserif. They were examining the jewelry. Princess Diana said that the squad should not touch the coffin and statues. She claims that the treasures will serve for military expenses so they had to be hidden in pockets. The woman picked up the scepter. At that moment, a girl turned to her and asked what she was going to do with the scepter. Diana said she would use it. She tells the legend of the founding kings. Diana suggests dealing with Diaz first, and then forming an army and taking over the country. Diana tells the girl that she doesn't have to worry. She claims that she has a secret plan. The girl is surprised. Diana shows the royal seal. The woman begins to get angry and says that Diaz ended the war and then dared to refuse her friendly offer. She was very angry. The woman also heard that Diaz dealt cruelly with people. She believed that he became famous because of false merits. She wanted justice. At this time, the blonde guy arrived at the royal tomb. He laughed because he didn't think that the members of the royal family would be even easier to deceive. He thought Diana was stupid. But it was a chance for the guy. He was going to deal with Diana and Diaz, and he also wanted to take revenge on all his abusers. The guy was going to become a hero of the country. He was laughing madly. In the evening, the first prince Richard appeared in the royal hall. He was constantly hiding behind Diana. Everyone around believed that Richard had attacked the royal tomb, but they believed that no intervention was needed. Richard sits down and says that it will not be possible to pacify the enemies since there is a risk of encountering Diaz. The audience asked what this had to do with the previous order. Richard replied that Diaz was to blame for everything. He thought Diana was taking a lot of risks. Richard started listing all of Diaz's nicknames. He also talks about the decree that was issued during the war, and about how Diaz behaved kindly. Richard claimed that some of Diaz's nicknames were wrong. He says that Diaz can deal with anyone, since status is not important to him. He says not to contact Diaz. A man came up to Richard and said that he was worried about one question. He asked why the king had exiled Diaz to the border area. Richard didn't like the man's manner. He says this is a wrong assumption. Then he says that his father did not exile him at all. Richard says that the king entrusted Diaz with taking care of the plane. He says he needed someone he could trust. Richard talks about his father's attitude towards Diaz. The man asks if this is true. Diaz talks about the situation in the country and the need for trust, and also about the reliability of Diaz. Diaz says that his father has prepared capable people and materials, but Mai's group intervened. A girl approaches Richard and asks who from the royal family Diaz has harmed. The servant tells Richard's story about how he was surrounded by enemy troops and he escaped only thanks to Diaz. But then Diaz hit him on the head for being stupid. Richard says this is the only time someone has hit him with all their might. Richard is grateful to Diaz anyway. The guy snaps his fingers and a bag of money is brought to him. The man picks up a bag of money and says that they will take care of Diana. At that time, Diana was screaming in the house, who was angry that everyone had left her. She thought she was doing the right thing. The woman looked at the scepter and smiled. She was going to rule the country. A human dog gets hit on the head. Klaus apologizes and asks if she's okay. Canis anxiously runs around with a first aid kit. Diaz shouts at Sidorio to raise the threshold. Sidorio obeys him, and the huge pit fills with water. All the dog people rejoiced that the reservoir was completed. Diaz is also happy that they were able to complete the reservoir before the summer. He was also pleased with the growth of the harvest. Bayars and Diaz go to the twins' field. The man noticed that the girls had fallen asleep. They dreamed about their parents. Diaz smiled and looked at the horse. He decided to free the horse and let him sleep with the girls. The horse did just that. Suddenly, Jellant flew up to Diaz. He asked what happened. 
The pigeon reports that Eldon was transmitting an important message that he would like to receive an answer to. The message said that Diana had paid a visit to the Castex territory in the Lord's Mansion, a few days ago. She demanded a meeting with Eldon. The man had to agree. The woman showed an order in which all the conditions and goals of their cooperation were disclosed. But the order was not drawn up according to the royal form. However, the man saw the seal. At this time, Canis approached Klaus and asked what he wanted. Klaus announces that he and Diaz will participate in the battles. Therefore, the man decides to confess his feelings to Canis. The girl is surprised and also admits that she loves him. Diaz, who was watching this scene, is surprised. Klaus promises to return from the battle and hugs Canis tighter. The girl cries and says she will be waiting for him. In the morning, Diaz and Klaus were standing in a field. The man said it was a war. Klaus lowered the telescope and agreed with him. Five days later, it was time for war. Diana stood with her army. Along with Diaz were the human dog and Ama. Ama accompanied Diaz as a liaison. Their combat readiness was 12 warriors, including Diaz and Klaus. Diaz equipped all the warriors with the necessary equipment. He also prepared the necessary materials and equipment. Klaus notices that there are a lot of Diana's warriors. He thinks they should have asked for reinforcements or accepted Aruna's help. Diaz said that Aruna has an important duty in hiding the village. She needed to protect the village. Klaus agrees. Klaus asks if the plan is progressing as they discussed. Diaz replies that they are acting according to an agreed plan. He begins to explain their plan. The man considered their advantage that dogs people of the graves to clarify the location of enemies, but he still wasn't sure if the plan would work. If the plan fails, Diaz will make a single attack on Bayars behind enemy lines, but he decided to hide it from everyone else. Ama turned to Diaz and pointed to the bell that the enemies had. The man says that this is the bell of war, giving instructions during the battle. He says it was used before, but now he considers it an antique. The bell begins to ring. Ama covers her ears. Klaus and Diaz open their eyes wide. Diaz says that a continuous strike is a signal of an all-army attack. He asked Ama to run out when the sound stopped. Diana and her troops got ready. Diaz also gave the command to stand in a fighting stance to all the soldiers. He reports that he does not understand the actions of the opponents, but decides to look at them according to the circumstances. He tightens his grip on his weapon. Diana's warriors ran forward. Diaz glared at them. The warriors stopped and began to look at each other. Klaus and Diaz didn't understand why the warriors stopped. Diaz still couldn't figure out what was going on. Klaus notices that Diana's escorts have run along the left and right flanks. At this time, Camelot served tea to Eldon. The man thanked the servant. A knight ran up to them and asked what they were doing. Eldon smiles and says it's tea time. The knight asks if Eldon is really going to go against the royal order. Eldon says he's following orders. He says that Diana should not forget that he cooperates with her more than enough. Eldon sets his conditions and continues to drink tea. He finishes his drink and asks the servant to bring more. Camelot obeys his lord. One of the warriors rubbed the back of his head and thought that something strange was happening since no one took on this task even though they paid a lot. The man did not expect that they would fight against Diaz. He wasn't going to rush it. Then the man turned around and ordered a retreat. His warriors asked if the man was sure. The man says they can't beat Diaz. The man reminds that Diaz is a good man who defended their country. He also didn't understand why Duke Castex's army wasn't moving either. He says those who want to fight can stay. Everyone obeys the captain and leaves. A man runs up to the captain and asks what they are doing. The captain returns the advance and says goodbye. Diaz noticed that only Diana's soldiers were heading towards them. He evaluates them and believes that it is better for their opponents to retreat. Diaz says they need to change the plan. He explains what they will do. Klaus is smiling. Diaz asks Ama to cover her ears for a minute. Diaz is screaming very loudly. The knights stop. 
Aruna heard the battle cry and thought it was a good one. Aruna tells the dog people that they need to support Dias. All human dogs agree. At this time, Klaus continued to fight. He was remembering the promise Canis had made. At that moment, a knight swung at him. Dias managed to warn Klaus. Klaus fights off the knight's attack and turns to Dias. The man points out that there is a snake under his feet. Klaus really notices the snake. Dias says it was very dangerous. He also says that they have almost dealt with Diana's soldiers, but we need to continue to be vigilant. Diana was watching the fight, but suddenly an arrow flew at the girl and the scepter fell out of her hands. The girl jumped off the horse and tried to figure out where the arrow came from. At that time, Aruna was shooting her bow. There was a dog next to her people who asked her about Diana. Diana tried to escape into the forest. Suddenly, an arrow hit the tree in front of her. Diana stopped only for a second and continued running. Suddenly, Diana was caught by other people. Aruna looked at them dumbfounded. The man who grabbed Diana says he did not expect to meet the target in the forest. They made the girl lose consciousness. Suddenly, an arrow flies in their direction. The man says they came on Richard's orders. He asks not to attack their squad anymore. When the man thought that the attack was over, an arrow flew into his money bag. The bag fell down. The man says he understood everything. He says they will keep the money, but they will take Diana away. Aruna watches the mercenaries running away. She picks up the bag and assumes that the man is telling the truth after all. She managed to evaluate the souls. Aruna decides to go back and tell Diaz about Diana. She assumes that Diaz is tired, so she's going to cook him something. At this time, Diana's knight screamed that he had lost, so he surrendered and asked for his life. Diaz said that there are many reasons for their defeat, but the main reason is that they were very tired getting here because of the heavy equipment. Klaus raised his spear and ordered everyone to give a victory cry because they had defeated the enemy troops. It seems that only all the enemy soldiers were able to use weapons and the will to fight. The mercenaries on the left flank retreated. He doesn't understand why they came. Diaz's troops have no casualties and seem to be unharmed. The enemy soldiers probably have a lot of wounded, but no deaths. Diaz realizes that the leader Diana was missed, so she could not be scolded. Suddenly, something bit Diaz's head. The attacker said that if Diaz did not want to kill the opponent, he could not kill. He could have used the wolf pits as planned, but Diaz decided to fight head on. How could a man survive in a war with such a method of fighting? Diaz said they had a comrade who was trusted with command and minor details. Suddenly Diaz called Eldon. The man was riding a horse and said that they had arrived to discuss the surrender and release of prisoners of war. Eldon asked something about the discussion. The man asked Eldon what he meant by surrender. Eldon said that this time, they, leading the army, invaded the territory of Diaz without permission. This is an act of aggression of crossing the border, provided for by the law of the kingdom. Now that Diana has disappeared, the reliability of the royal order has been shaken. They should immediately surrender to Diaz and make peace. Diaz asks what they can talk about because there is no need to reconcile. Diaz's assistant said he thinks Eldon is looking for an excuse talking about surrender and reconciliation. Eldon nods in response. Diaz says, agreeing that in this case, he accepts reconciliation. This time I'm especially grateful do what's best for him because he doesn't mind. Eldon said he was grateful for Diaz's generous actions regarding the general circumstances as Amos said. Next, he plans to meet with his majesty. Perhaps it will become a measured coin. Diaz said that Eldon surprised them again by talking about negotiations with the king. He asks how reconciliation with him will become a measured coin. Eldon said she didn't know that yet. He just wants to increase the number of trumps in his hands. According to the explanation, this time the responsibility lies with the king. The royal seal, something that cannot be let out of your hands, has been stolen. We got into a situation where they forge a royal personal document. In addition, the problem is that they could not stop Diana's escape, and as a result they were involved in an undesirable conflict. 
Therefore, as Diaz said, he is the victim of the king's mistake. It seems that Eldon plans to take full advantage of this situation. After that, they started talking about compensation. Diaz said that the conversation was difficult, but Eldon can present his name any way he wants, doing what is necessary. If Diaz can help with anything else, don't hesitate to speak. Eldon thanked Diaz. Suddenly, Eldon and Diaz's assistant felt something. Someone told Diaz that he did a great job. It was Aruna. The girl said that this was truly worthy courage. For breakfast, she mixed medicinal herbs with the arousal effect obtained from the head. It looks like they were useful. Diaz asked about herbs with an arousal effect. Diaz remembered the chief's words and then realized that after the battle, it still seemed strange to him that everyone was less tired. When he asked why Aruna used medicinal herbs to conceive a child at this time, the girl replied that she had heard from Moru that medicinal herbs give special energy. When Aruna was forced to take care of Diaz, Mora said that the time would come when the bickering would develop into some kind of relationship between him and the girl. Regarding this case, the man will definitely file a complaint with the sea later. Then the girl said that when she was chasing Diana, she met a man. They said they were running errands for Richard, who was raised by the child Diaz. They also said that this Richard would take care of this woman. This money was also prepared by Richard for Diaz. He is truly a very caring and well-mannered child. Diaz remembers Richard and whether there was such a child at all. Diaz wanted to ask Aruna a lot of things, but they were done with what they had to do, so they decided to separate today. After handing over the prisoners of war to Eldon and receiving various things under the pretext of compensation, they slowly returned home to the village of Iluk. Suddenly, Diaz notices the dogs. Aruna said that they are the sorority of Iluk village, so she asked them to collect trophies from the battlefield. The Iluk village sorority was probably created by Aruna and the human dog housewives. He thought it was just a meeting of good friends, but it seems that everyone in the sorority was undergoing some kind of combat training under Aruna. Diaz thought that he was telling Aruna to protect the village, so he said that Aruna could have reported it in advance. Aruna replied that she was talking about it, but Diaz was not paying attention. Diaz was surprised and apologized to the girl. Suddenly, Diaz noticed a member of the sorority who was carrying an interesting staff in his teeth. He calls a member of the sorority and asks her to show him this staff. Diaz picks up the staff. Aruna asks what it is. Diaz replies that this gemstone has signs of being filled with magical power. Maybe put some magic into it to test it. Aruna tried to put magic into the staff, but realizes that nothing is happening, as if it were just an ordinary stone. Diaz takes the staff in his hands and does not understand what he felt. It looks like that strange feeling when he holds a battle axe in his hands, or is it because Aruna has filled him with magical power? The man tries to concentrate and suddenly the snake's eyes on the staff begin to glow. In the next moment, magic bursts out of the staff, which turns into a huge flame that bursts out of their staff. Aruna said that maybe the current strength is the same as his axe. Klaus and Diaz's assistant started asking about the Pillar of Fire and what Diaz had done. Aruna asked if Diaz could control fire. She hopes they didn't have inaccurate work. She takes the staff from him and says that she will have it for now. After a while, they return home. Senai and Achen meet Diaz and Klaus meets his beloved Canis. That's how the war between Diaz's village and Diana ended. After that, they all conducted various tests of the staff's strength and Diaz's strength, but as a result, they found out that only Diaz could use this staff. If Diaz makes a little effort, as if they were repairing a battle axe, then a fire will appear, but for some reason he could not explain it clearly to everyone. As a result, Aruna puts magic power into the staff, and Diaz releases fire. Senai said that this staff is amazing and instantly ignites. I can said it was easier than flint. Diaz decides to use the staff to light a fire in the village. A month later, summer was approaching and the royal capital was bustling. The main theme is the great criminal Diana, who stole the royal seal and plotted an uprising. 
Richard, the first prince, immediately discovered this plot and arrested Diana. Eldon, the successor of Duke Castex, the hero of the West. Thanks to Eldon's report, the stolen rewards for the hero who saved the country were discovered and four people of the second prince of Mize were put in a difficult position. Later Diana, who incurred the wrath of the king, lost her inheritance. Although she escaped execution, it was decided that she would be imprisoned in the temple. Thanks to this case, Richard made a big leap. He gained the deepest trust of the king and the remnants of Diana's faction, including those who escaped from Mize, as a result becoming the largest faction in the kingdom. Eldon presented a lot of information, including cases with charges and several Western specialty products. Thus, he successfully earned the deep trust of the king and received the title, Inheriting the Territory. He was also allowed to take a new surname. In addition, as an apology for the incident with Diana, he personally received special allowances from the king in the form of a three-year tax exemption. The Duke of Castex, Eldon, became famous. After a while, Richard left the room. His people started asking why Richard was in a bad mood again. In this incident, Richard is the only winner. The man replied that Richard said the current winner is the Duke of Castex. Where Richard supposedly wins is actually also a trick of the Duke of Castex. The three-year tax exemption is also a problem. Not only does this undermine the huge tax revenues from the Castex territories that control the western trading regions, but it will also allow Duke Castex to build up too much power while he is not paying taxes. In addition, the Duke of Castex told the audience that he supports the next to the throne, Richard. This put Richard in a position where he would not be able to inadvertently interfere in the Duke of Castex's affairs. You cannot openly attack your own supporters and in this situation, it will be difficult to force his majesty to cancel the tax exemption. Richard said he couldn't forgive himself for doing everything according to the Duke's intentions. There were also rumors about Diaz, the hero who saved the country, which spread throughout the kingdom. It was said that Diaz was driven to the cursed land penniless, but he broke the curse with the power of the Holy Axe. He single-handedly defeated the Earth Dragon. Under his leadership, more than a hundred people gathered to create a personal city, and also that he married an incomparable beauty. The king is also determined to give Diaz from the orphanage the title of duke and a new surname, as well as an order to exempt him from taxes. At first glance it seemed like a hoax, but then Eldon, who was in the royal capital, admitted that this was the truth. Numerous rumors spread throughout every region of the kingdom of Sunserif. To the west, to the plain, up to Diaz, influencing many places and people, it spread everywhere. After a while, Aruna told Diaz that a lot of things had happened, but finally everything calmed down. Diaz agrees and says that we need to prepare for the summer. It's going to be very hard. He says he'll start right away tomorrow. Aruna then looked at the sleeping twins and said she could help Diaz relax. The girl suggests that the man lie down on his stomach. Diaz thanks Aruna. The girl says that he can rely on her at any time. She will support him with all her might. The man thanks Aruna. The girl offers the man a rest today because she does not want fatigue to affect tomorrow. Some time ago, when Diaz and the others were opposing Diana, Francis and Francois went west, west of the village of Illuk. No one understood what happened to them because they are usually so timid and cautious. Suddenly, Francis and Francois began to mech. Human dogs can talk to Francis and Francois, but at that moment they could not understand the meaning of their words. Suddenly, a very loud sound was heard. The dogmen were surprised and thought that this voice seemed to come from the depths of the earth. He sounded like he was saying it was too early and not enough. The dogman told Francis and Francois that it was time for them to return home and then asked whose voice it was. They replied that they needed to return to the village and then thanked the human dogs for accompanying them. For the suit group, this was a mysterious event. Later, they would hear the good news about the victory of Diaz's team, and they completely forgot about it. The next morning, Aruna asked Aisha if she really still didn't like wearing a saddle. Diaz thinks that Diana used to ride this horse. In the old language, there is a word Aisha, which means horse with moon hair. 
Aruna named Diana's horse that way, and she cherishes it. They took her away after the battle, but she doesn't seem to like anyone riding her very much. She wasn't considered for riding, she was just taken care of. Aruna said that the horse is completely attached to the previous owner, this often happens. Instead of forcing her, it's better to wait until she opens up to her. Suddenly, Aruna's horn lit up. Aruna's horn glowed green, and something got into the perception of magic. Aruna has placed around the village to notice who is approaching, magic can only sense the presence of someone. Suddenly, someone ran up to Diaz and said that someone was approaching the village. Something shiny and wet. Diaz tried to calm the dog man down. The dog man said that the intruder also had a big mouth. Diaz suggested that it might be Pajin. Aruna agreed with him. Pajin is a frog trader and formerly a visitor to the village. I'm sure I asked him to advertise the recruitment of the population and ordered the next batch. It became interesting to Diaz that he had gathered those who wanted to move. The fraud came and said that there were a lot of rumors about Diaz and he had brought the goods they ordered. He introduced himself as Pajin Du's younger brother and said his name was Pajin Ri. On behalf of his older brother, he delivered the ordered goods to Diaz. Diaz was surprised. Aruna said that it really is, if you look closely, then the voice and clothes are different. It looks like it, but it's not Pajin before. The frogman said that the Pajin seed is a merchant family that has earned a huge fortune using both water and land transportation methods as a market. He is one of the seven sons of the eighth head of the family, Pajin Octato. Diaz asked what happened to Pajin before. Pajin Ri said that he heard that Pajin Du lost something important during the trade and he was suspended from work, so this time he is as a representative. He asks if they can talk about recruiting, about Diaz's first assignment. There is no one in the land of the beastmen who would like to leave their country and come here, this is the current situation if they were servants, then as many as they like. However, Diaz does not like servants nevertheless, his son has tried all possible means as a result of their bloodless. The bloodless are those who are beastmen, but have lost their bestiality. Their appearance is very close to the human race, as well as their physical strength. The reason for this is not very clear, for some reason a child with weak blood is suddenly born. Then, after a few generations the blood of the beast disappears completely. The current king of beasts shows a deep love for the bloodless. However, the previous beast kings had a completely different view of this. The bloodless were not treated very well. There are few people willing to escape from the land of beastmen. But Diaz has married a half-human spouse in addition, he accepts the abandoned with open arms, and if necessary, they will be able to return to their country. There are several who are ready to move to this plane. So before bringing in the bloodless ones, he thought he'd first make sure Diaz didn't mind the bloodless ones. Diaz thought that he would certainly like to accept them. Diaz says that in fact, there is a lord in the neighboring territory, he is working hard to free half-humans and half-beasts from service and protect them. He didn't see it himself, but judging by the goods, he seems to be quite rich. Visitors can come to him, but maybe they will want to go there. Anyone who has had a hard time so far, he thinks it would be better to live with a rich Elden. Pajin was surprised and said he wished Diaz had told him about it a little earlier. This may turn out to be a new commodity exchange. He asks if Diaz can pave a trade road. Diaz thinks the brothers are very much the same. Pajin apologized and said that he was involuntarily worried. He suggests starting trading. Pajin says he can start with a mother-of-pearl vessel and then shows a wooden box with inlay. Diaz asked Pajin to stop because such things are not for him. Aruna puts down a bag of coins and says that they will buy as much as they can with all this gold. They will see if they can choose the right things. Diaz asks Aruna if he is sure. Undoubtedly, beautiful artistic products, but something like this is unnecessary for life. Aruna replied that just having gold would not fill her stomach, if they did not buy the goods, the merchant would stop trading. Then they can let him earn. It is better to show that they are valuable customers, so he can come to trade again, there are enough savings, there will be no problems. 
Diaz replied that unused art products could be sold to someone else. He decides to leave it all to Aruna. Pejin said that with such a budget, they would be able to buy a lot of goods. Although there is not much left, but he can offer necklaces and a very expensive stone that will suit the lady. Aruna realizes that Pajin is lying. She says that there is no need to joke because with this budget she will take extra dried and smoked fish, so she asks Pajin to pack all the boxes. Also, the gemstone in this necklace seems to be a fake, so she asks to be given a real stone. As a bonus, Pajin can add a barrel of wine. Pajin said that in this case he would go broke, so he suggests that Aruna discuss the cost again. Diaz thinks that as expected from Aruna, she will take care of everything and it looks good. Then the dog man asked the geese what happened to them and how they got to this place. One of the geese pinched the man dog's paw and he jumped up and opened their cage. The geese chased after the man dog, who did not understand why they were chasing and chasing her. Suddenly Maya came up and asked what was going on here because these geese are very cheerful. The food may be leftover vegetables from cooking. Sometimes they live from 20 to 50 years. They are very attached to their owners, but at the same time they are very careful and aggressive. If a thief approaches the house, the geese begin to quack, and if pest animals approach the field, the geese drive them away by pinching with their beaks. You can get eggs, meat, feathers, and many other things from them. Geese are also called birds of grace. They are well fed and have beautiful shiny beaks. The feathers and legs look healthy. Diaz tells Pajin and Aruna that he would like to buy these geese. Pajin starts counting and says that this is the payment for six geese and from here he can remove 20%. Diaz realizes that it looks like they are still negotiating. Pajin then tells Aruna that in fact he has the goods on hold. Aruna asks about the product. Pajin says he's heard that Diaz doesn't have an heir yet. In fact, he presents this thing only to nobles, but this time is special, so he will offer it to the lady. It's a little expensive, but a very good product. He shows some kind of clothes. Aruna asks what it is. Pajin explains that this outfit is worn for a spell. They say that if the spouse wears this suit, she will immediately receive an heir. Aruna asks how you can get a child with such a thing because it's just strings. Pajin replied that he did not know, but he had a very strong influence on human nobles. Aruna asks Pajin to take it away. After a while, the number of goods increased. Diaz thought it looked like the long negotiation battle was finally over. It seems that we managed to reduce the price but a lot of extra things were added. The result was a draw, but only Diaz thought so, and Aruna and Pajin did not think so. Thanks to the soul assessment, Aruna successfully negotiated. Pajin has sold more than half of his products, including expensive jewelry. He thinks that both have received a suitable benefit without loss. But Pajin was trying to sell low-quality goods at an inflated price, and Aruna saw through everything. And yet, I did not blame him for this, nor was it an excuse to lower the price. As Diaz said earlier, Pajin made a profit, Aruna was excellent. As a result, they received food, household goods, various art products and six geese, as well as wine as expected from Aruna. Then the men take everything to the warehouse. Aruna decided to help too, and then discovered a strange group of outfits. She looks at the clothes and thinks that there is a style of a dancer, a warrior, a waitress and male versions. Aruna imagines herself in these outfits and then realizes that she is thinking about something strange because there are little twins in the house. Pajin has almost sold all these outfits and thinks that one more push and he will definitely sell it all. Then they put all their things away. Diaz thanked everyone for their help. Then he noticed Aruna's red face and asked what had happened to her. The girl was embarrassed and said that it wasn't like that at all. Pajin told Diaz that they were leaving and asked if the man had any requests for the next trade. Diaz says that next time he wants Pajin to bring a lot of suitable products for human dogs. They have some gold and silver coins and he wants them to use them. Pajin said he understood everything and asked Diaz to rely on him. 
Then Pajin calls Aruna and says he will bring her something better next time. Aruna blushed and said she didn't need to. Then, when Pajin left, they had a lot of work to do. We need to prepare a place for keeping geese. First, they will build a small barn. They will dig a ditch from the river and make a small watering hole near the barn. He thinks they can do without him, but he's heard that they're growing up better with him, so he thinks they should make him. Then dog people run to Diaz and say that they helped Maya's grandmother and the others. Diaz thanked them for their help. Diaz said they were all dirty, so he asked what they were doing. Maya said she asked them to work hard for the geese. The other women thanked Diaz for buying such good geese. According to their appearance, a couple more birds will be added to them. They did everything they needed to do. The materials for the poultry house were taken from an unused me barn. They did everything without Diaz's permission, but it's all necessary, so it's not a problem. Diaz thanked everyone for their help and said they had done a great job. Then he remembered that he had not yet awarded the man-dogs for the battle with Diana. He says that he will present an award to everyone as a memory of the victory. Not only to those who fought, but also to everyone who defended their village. More precisely, he is going to give everyone in the village an illuck, so he asks everyone to gather in the square. After a while, everyone was gathered in the square. Diaz says he is very grateful to the human dogs in the battle against Diana. He thanks everyone and says that now everyone will receive a gold coin as a reward. For those who were on the battlefield, two coins, and for those who were not on the battlefield, one. The parents will receive the children's part. Everyone was delighted and soon Diaz and Aruna began handing out coins to everyone. Finally, Diaz finished handing out the coins. Suddenly, the dog man turned to him. Diaz asked what happened. The dog man asked if it was possible to make a hole for a gold coin. Diaz asked about the hole. Then the other human dogs ran up to him and said they also wanted to make a hole. Diaz asked why they wanted to make a hole in a gold coin. He doesn't say they can't, but before that he wants to hear the reason. He was told that when he made a hole so that a string could be passed through it. After threading the string, they will put it around their neck. The reward they received from Diaz, they want them to always be with them. Diaz asks that it is a gold coin, so it is a cash item. He handed it to them, hoping that they would use it to buy what they wanted. The dog people talked about not wanting it. Diaz thought that as it happened, they gave them gold and silver coins as a reward for their daily work, but they decorated the yurts inside with the coins they received. He thought it was an act of joy to be rewarded for long-awaited work, but it seems Diaz was mistaken. For them, it is a precious souvenir, or rather it looks more like a keepsake. He would have let them do what they wanted, but he had already asked Pajin for human dog supplies. If they don't use the money as money, then it will be a problem. Diaz asked the human dog if he really had a special fondness for gold and silver. The human dog replied that he thought they were beautiful and shiny, but he didn't have any particular predilections for it. Diaz asks if there is any sense in this award from him then. The human dog responds that there is a meaning because it is a joyful reward and memories. Diaz said that then why not give him a good, memorable reward and they use gold as gold. The human dog agreed and said it would be the best reward. Diaz thought that even though he said so, he didn't know what was best to prepare. A better reward than gold, and he will have to prepare about a hundred. Aruna says that maybe, for example, the fangs and bones of animals obtained by Diaz himself on the hunt will be suitable. She asks the human dog if he would be happy if the necklace crafted by Diaz's hands became his reward. Everyone happily said that they would be very happy about it. Aruna says that's all for today then. As soon as the necklaces are ready, Diaz will hand them to each of the human dogs. They agreed. Diaz thanked Aruna for the good offer. Thanks to this, everyone was able to return to work. Aruna says that although this necklace is a reward, she asks if the man will give her anything. Diaz says he will do one thing for Aruna. Diaz then notices Senai and Achen as well as Ama. He asked if they had been at the meeting place all this time. Ama replies that she was showing the twins how to practice. 
Senai and Achen said they also want necklaces. Diaz says Aruna was talking about animals, probably black buffaloes. He also says that the girls know them well and eat them well. He asks if they want leftover necklaces. Senai and Achen say they don't need such necklaces. Diaz thinks it's not very good to make a necklace like this as a reward, but they don't have any other suitable materials. Aruna said that a man can just spend time making them, putting his feelings into it. People's dogs don't want something valuable, but something in the form of Diaz's feelings, which means that their attitude to gold coins is obvious. Diaz must carefully scrape off each piece with care, putting feelings into it. He can put some gemstone in it to make it look better. Aruna has a few jewels left, so she can share them with a man. Diaz thought he didn't know if he was going to do well. Aruna told Diaz not to worry because fine work is her strong point. Even if he is inept, he will show the man how to do it correctly, so he will quickly learn. Diaz thanks the girl, but it has been bothering him for a long time, so it's so easy for people to understand him. He hadn't said anything yet, but the girl had read what he was thinking. Maybe the girl uses the same negotiation skills as Pageant on it. Everyone starts smiling sweetly. Diaz was embarrassed and thought that now he understands that he also knows what they are all thinking. After a while, Diaz carefully creates the necklaces. Diaz finished making the necklace and said it turned out better than he thought. Aruna suddenly appears and asks the man if he can be distracted. Diaz said he was finally done. He gives her a necklace and asks her what she will say about his success. Aruna puts a necklace around her neck and says it's a good job and it will make human dogs happy. Diaz said it took him three days to make one necklace. At this rate, he wonders how many days it will take to finish doing for everyone. Aruna said that when he did such a thing once, he would be able to do it faster afterwards. No need to rush, just take it step by step. And when he does that, he suddenly realizes that he's done. Diaz said that as Aruna said, she would continue slowly. Then Diaz asked what happened, because the girl wanted to say something. Aruna remembers this. Aruna said that while Diaz was working on it, they thought about what they could do on their part and decided to do a Kamado Ba if the man didn't mind. Kamado Ba is a cooking area with several ovens next to each other. Now they cook food on every stove in the yurt. With so many people, it's become a little crowded, and it's a little troublesome to carry all the household utensils and ingredients back and forth. That's when Ama suggested building a place with ovens and a bread oven made by Klaus, they would make a well and a place for washing. She also says that they will make a roof covering the whole place with stoves. If there is such a place with stoves, they will be able to cook various dishes faster than they are now. She asks what Diaz thinks. Diaz thinks it looks like they want to cook food on the spot with stoves. He replies that he doesn't mind, but if they're going to build furnaces under the roofs, then what about the materials? Aruna thinks she can ask Camelots. If they buy a roof or two for the stable, that should be enough. Diaz says that the next time Jolent arrives, he will write a letter to that effect. Aruna replies that everything is fine. Canis is coming home soon, so she asked her to deliver a message. Diaz said she was already leaving. Canis stayed in the village of Iluk to see if the human dogs would be able to adapt to life here, but judging by the way they have been behaving lately, she believes that everything is fine. Aruna replies that by the time Canis returns here, there is still a lot of work to be done, for example, the expansion of Klaus' yurt, but he thinks that Klaus himself will do everything in his power. She tells Diaz to keep it up. Diaz asks if Canis will really come back here again and why they are talking about Klaus' yurt. The girl is surprised and asks what does it mean why. She asks if Diaz hasn't noticed. She says the two have been on good terms for a long time. Canis returns to his hometown to tell his father about it. Diaz was very surprised and started asking if Klaus and Canis had had such a relationship for a long time. Aruna asks if the man really didn't notice. She asks if they didn't exchange friendly feelings during the meal. Suddenly, Diaz remembers a very tasty dish at that moment. He then asks if Canis is really going to live here with Klaus. 
Aruna says she was told that they would get married when they were ready. If they are so close, won't they be blessed with a child soon? Aruna said Diaz would ask them for details. Diaz thought he was very happy for those two. Suddenly, they heard enthusiastic shouts that Aruna was very lucky and she took the first finished product. Aruna said that she really liked this product. At that time, Klaus was shouting in his yurt and saying that trouble had happened because he did not know which was the best betrothal gift. After a while, Diaz was sitting in his yurt and making necklaces. He says that he has quite good success in making necklaces. As Aruna said, by doing one at a time, he gets the knack. Suddenly, he notices Senai and Achen who were watching him from afar. Diaz realized that the girls also wanted the necklace. He says he will make necklaces for them too, so they don't have to worry. The girls opened the door and ran away. Diaz shouted at them that if they opened the doors, they should close them. Diaz had to close the door. Suddenly Klaus burst into him, who said that he would like to discuss something with him, and then asked if he had time. Klaus asked the young man to calm down, and then asked what was the matter. After a while Diaz asks if Klaus is really at a loss what kind of engagement gift to give Canis's parents. Klaus agrees and says that Canis said it was not necessary, but still thinks that we need to prepare better. Klaus asks if Diaz really gave Aruna's parents an engagement present too. He asks what kind of thing the man handed to the girl. Diaz said that in his case, he found himself in a situation where he was forced to get married, he donated the earth dragon materials. Klaus was surprised and asked what reaction Aruna's parents had. Diaz replied that they were very happy. According to Moru, it could have been 30 black buffaloes or something close. 30 black bulls if so, he can handle it. Diaz said the problem is their culture and values. Having handed over the black buffaloes, they don't really know if they will be happy. The man says he handed over some gold coins. She asks if it would be better to use them and buy some suitable item as a gift. Klaus said that he had no awareness at all that he had received them through his own efforts. He was able to get fame and is satisfied. Most of all, he wants to give what he gets on his own. After hearing Diaz's story, he also wants to become like him and Aruna, so he wants to give the fruits of the hunt. Diaz thought it was dangerous to hunt an earth dragon. He doesn't know if they'll be happy with black buffalo meat. Then Diaz remembers the sheep, which are very soft to the touch and fluffy. First you need to hunt black buffaloes. After hunting, you need to take the black buffaloes to the village of the Oni tribe and exchange them for me cloth. Klaus will be able to give this fabric to me as an engagement gift. Good quality fabric has many uses. He doesn't think there's going to be a problem with that. Camelots was very impressed with the quality of the me fabric. He is sure that the girl's parents will be happy. Klaus agrees and says that it is indirect, but we can say that this is the result of hunting. It is also a local branded product. At the same time, it would be nice to learn the secrets of hunting them. Diaz said he thinks his advice on methods won't help. Klaus agrees and says that these are inhuman methods. He would learn the way of battle from them, so the young man thanked Diaz. Five days later, Diaz was still making jewelry. The man said that when he mastered the techniques, it went faster. Two or three more days, and he will definitely finish. He was suddenly interrupted by Aruna, who informed him that Canis had returned. She apologized to the man for distracting him, but he heard there was a report, so he's ready to listen. The girl said that she had just returned and had also received permission from her parents and from today on, as a resident of this place and as a member of Klaus' family, she would try her best. She asks me to take care of him. Diaz replies that the girl should also take care of them. He thinks she's been through a lot, but he wants her and Klaus to do their best. The girl agrees. Aruna then asks if there shouldn't be a report. The girl remembers that she has a report. She says that Eldon and Camelots were absent because they went to the royal capital. Her father is currently acting as deputy lord. Along with the announcement of the wedding, she also asked for the construction of a place with stoves. They will send materials and other supplies later along with the artisans. 
Due to such circumstances, her father will not be able to leave the territory, so only her mother will be present at the wedding. Instead, she and Klaus will go to greet them, so her father will hold a banquet, and she will probably stay for a few days, so she asks Diaz to take care of her. Diaz thought that Klaus's wedding was still a long way off. Until the black buffalo hunt is over, they will not be able to hold the ceremony. Then Diaz thought that they had forgotten something important. Then the man asked when they were leaving. The girl replied that she was going to leave right now. Diaz and Aruna were very surprised. The girl asked if it could be that Klaus was going somewhere right now. Diaz said that, the fact is, Klaus hunts black buffaloes day after day, but he has only killed two black buffaloes in the last five days, so things are not going well. With the help of Matabi powder, they should have been easy to hunt, but it seems that Klaus is setting up to hunt with his own forces and therefore found themselves in this situation. He heard the sorority and the suits said they wanted to help him, but he replied that at any cost he wanted to prepare an engagement gift on his own. Klaus stubbornly stands his ground. Without using Matabi powder, without the help of human dogs, he runs alone across this wide plain searching. He caught two buffaloes without wounds in this way, you can say he did enough. The girl wondered what Klaus was doing. She is happy with the engagement gift, but above all, the created power is the Datshun power of Klaus. You can openly ask for help. Diaz asks Canis what she is going to do. Canis said that she would certainly slap her hand on the cheeks of her husband doing stupid things and bring him to his senses. She feels joy, but if she gets hurt or dies, Klaus does not understand how sad she will be. Her mom said it was the best remedy when dealing with people like that. Her father also suffered from it many times. After a while, Kenny says goodbye to Diaz and Aruna. Suddenly Aruna started waving her hand. Diaz asked the girl what she was doing. Aruna replied that she just thought that if anything happened, then she, as a wife, should do it properly. Diaz asks the girl to be more restrained. Aruna asked if Diaz really wouldn't tell her not to do it. Diaz said that if he did something for which he would get a slap from Aruna, then he deserved this blow. He will have no choice but to accept it. Aruna then asked if Diaz had prepared a gift for Klaus and Canis. Women prepare festive things and prepare a banquet. Diaz says that everything is fine and he will definitely prepare a gift for the ceremony. He hasn't figured out what to give you yet. Aruna abruptly began to train her attack. Diaz thought that he would prepare a thing for congratulations at any cost, and these are incredible blows. After Klaus received from Canis, he stopped being strangely persistent. He asked for help from human dogs and used Matabi powder. Sometimes he began to hunt with Canis. As a result, he was able to achieve good results. In just three days, he had collected enough black buffaloes. Shortly after, Klaus and the others went to the neighboring territory. Seeing them off, Diaz was in a hurry in his heart. He was so busy making necklaces that he didn't prepare anything for congratulations. He thought it would take longer to hunt black buffaloes. He didn't expect them to finish in three days. Aruna and the others will have a real feast when they get back. There's not much time left. He thinks it would be best to discuss it with Aruna, but he told her that it's okay. Now it's hard to discuss it with her. That's why Diaz came to Moru, the chief. Diaz said he didn't know who else to turn to. He also wanted to tell me something, so he'll call it what it is. He talked about Paul, about the beginning of the trade with Pajin and others, about the battle with Diana. He brought with him several trophies of that time and said to use them here on his own. The chief replied that he was always a few steps ahead of his expectations. She decides to give a couple of tips. Diaz will be able to quickly prepare a wedding gift. How about high-quality bed linen made of me fabric? Bed linen is always made in abundance, so she can share it right now. She says it's a suitable gift for newlyweds. Diaz is thinking about the newlyweds, the bedding, and they will spend the night. Diaz says it's true, Klaus hasn't grown up, so it might be appropriate. The chief said that at this rate she did not know when she would be able to hold Aruna's baby. 
They are husband and wife, but this is the way of life as spouses, but unusually abstemious. She thinks it's a good idea to give them bed linen from Dias. She will give him something with embroidered wishes for protection from diseases and easy childbirth, so he should take it with him. Dias thanks the elder. After a while Dias says that this pillow has different patterns on the front and back, which is unusual. The chief says she will give it to the man. Then Dias notices the pouch and says what it is. The chief replies that it is a medicine for the birth of a child. A few days later, artisans and materials arrived from the neighboring territories. It took about three days to build a place with stoves and a roof. In addition, the artisans handed over a barn for geese and a toilet as there was an opportunity. For the good work, Dias paid everyone ten gold coins and thanked them for their work, as well as paid for the materials. Not knowing the market price, he was worried, but everything seemed to be fine. The next day, the artisans returned to the neighboring territory. Klaus returned with a cart full of souvenirs. At that moment, the wagon stopped at a small forest so that people could have a snack. The man thanked the young man. He is a stranger and he took him on this trip with him and also made him tea. The young man replied that their foster parent had raised them that way. They couldn't leave the old man to travel alone and it looks like they're all going to the same place. The girl said that she wanted to meet their father as soon as possible. At that moment, she thought of Klaus. After a while, Dias asks Aruna what he looks like and he thinks he looks quite strange. Aruna said that everything is fine and the man looks good, and then she asks the man to bend over a little. Today is the time for Klaus and Kenny's wedding ceremony. The man was appointed the presenter. This celebration mostly follows the form of the kingdom's traditions, but combines the traditions of the human dogs desired by Klaus. Also the traditions of the Oni tribe, the desired Kenny's. This celebration has become unique for the village of Iluk. Kani's mother, Martel, was present at the wedding. Diaz began his speech by saying that people cannot live alone. That's why people find a way to become a family by loving someone who is not themselves. Today they are holding a celebration celebrating the beginning of a new life for two people. People who want to start a family in order to become such a family. For a wedding ceremony, it is very important to write a blessing to the abandoned saints of Daya. From early childhood, the scriptures were hammered into him in order not to make mistakes in any case. Even now, he can read it without a single mistake. Before on the battlefield, he read the funeral scripture when comrades died, read the scripture of glorification of life when he witnessed a birth, read the scripture of blessing when someone tied the knot. Klaus seems to have remembered that time and asked him to make sure to conduct the ceremony in person, so he will fulfill this duty. The teachings left by Saint Daya are not so complicated. To love others, to love oneself and celebrate life, not to harm others, not to take other people's things, not to enter the territory of others. One should not discriminate and oppress others because of their origins, their way of life. It's so obvious that they tend to forget about these very important things. Saint Daya has always stood by the side of the founding king, with the wisdom of the founder of the world found in the Holy Land, he supported the great deeds of the founding king. When the kingdom was founded and people's lives calmed down, he built a temple extolling God sleeping in the Holy Land and left behind many divine teachings, but he himself did not have a life partner and children and then left the world. Therefore, today everyone has gathered here to eat, drink, dance, wishing them a happy future, and blessing them with the beginning of a new life. Now that the food is ready, they can enjoy these great dishes together. Everyone started celebrating. Diaz decides to try the goodies too. A lot of walnuts were put in this bread. He looks at Senai and Achen and realizes that they cooked him. Diaz says it's delicious, and this nut bread. The girls start making noise and Diaz tells them that they are being rude. Senai and Achen immediately calm down. Then someone tells Chef Marf and Sidorio that they can start soon. The dog people start throwing Klaus up. This ritual of feasting was passed down among the people of the dog people. 
a man who has found happiness in marriage is carried around the village, showing him and wishing him happiness, as well as letting the whole village know that this man is already married. They say the purpose of this is to reduce troubles such as cheating. It seems that this is not necessary, since today all the villagers have gathered in this place, but a ritual is a ritual. Then the human dogs started patting Klaus. The lonely dogs beating him are people. It's for the sake of dispelling jealousy of the groom, of their happy marriage. A kind of ritual is the search for new meetings, telling others that he is lonely. Klaus was laughing very hard at that moment. Everyone was having fun together. Klaus thanked everyone for celebrating the beginning of his new life. He promises that he and Canis will build a happy and loving family here in the village of Iluk. Canis screamed that she would try her best too. She promises that they will be happy together with Klaus. This was how an incredible wedding celebration took place. Everyone was happy, laughing, singing, dancing and eating delicious food. Suddenly Aruna came up to Diaz and asked him to come with her. Diaz said he doesn't dance very well. Aruna replied that she did not expect much from the very beginning, so the man need not worry. There is not much such culture in the Oni tribe, but Maya and the others had previously taught him something, so this is a good opportunity, so she suggests that the man dance a little. As a result, Diaz and Aruna start dancing. Diaz was very insecure about himself. Then Diaz noticed how everyone was dancing, and Aruna snuggled up to him. And so a little time passed. After dancing and eating, a soothing atmosphere soon descended. An indescribably unique time, and this often happens at banquets. It's the right time. Diaz brings a chest and tells the dog people that he will give out necklaces as a reward for the battle, so they should pack up. All the human dogs ran to Diaz. The man told everyone to be calm because everyone has enough so they can take turns. He actually wanted to hand them out as soon as they were ready, but everyone was busy so he couldn't. Then Klaus and the others offered to distribute them during the feast. Then he gives out pendants to everyone. Canis was surprised and asked if Diaz would really give her jewelry as well. Diaz says he wants the girl to accept it unconditionally in memory of becoming a villager. Then Senai and Achen approach Canis. They give the girl handkerchiefs with embroidery and says that it is a gift from them. The girl thanks the twins. And from the human dogs she received the beautiful stones found on the plain. From Francis and Francois, a fragment of the precious me family, from Ama, a poem wishing happiness to the two of them. Klaus thanked everyone and then saw an unusual rock salt. Diaz wonders if something similar has been mined in the vicinity. Diaz realizes that he also needs to be given a gift. Diaz's names are Klaus and Canis. He hands them a gift and says that he wants them to accept it from him. Klaus was surprised and thanked Diaz for the pastel linen. Aruna praised Diaz and said that the bed linen with embroidered wishes for offspring and prayers for an easy birth, Diaz also has a similar awareness. Maya praised Diaz. Aruna tells Diaz to take the pastel linen to the yurt. The man agrees. Then he sees everyone gathering and saying that they should leave the rest to the two young ones. Diaz thought that just because they were talking about bedding didn't mean they had to hurry before sunset. Thus, today's celebration ended much earlier than planned. Although Diaz was supposed to be hosting today's celebration, Aruna told Diaz to help everyone too. The man agrees. At that time, men with bear skins were in some kind of cave. One of the men said that he had grabbed onto the trail and realized where the village was. They say there is a rich man there who has made many purchases from the beastmen people. A mysterious village somewhere on the plain of Neutros. Another man said that a wagon had recently been spotted heading to the plain. If she's heading to the village, maybe they can follow her trail. If they are wrong, they will attack the wagon. The strong have the right to dominate the weak. The man says that he is Huga's and will dominate everyone. It seems that a terrible enemy is approaching the village. The cart was traveling across the plain. The young man asked the girl if she was sure that this was the right place because there was nothing here but grass. The girl replied that it was west of the Kazdek's territory, so it should be correct. 
Suddenly, a dog man appeared in front of them. She asked who these people were. If they are bandits, she will bite them, so they should leave faster. At that time, Diaz was sitting in the yurt. The season meets summer. There were small changes in his life. Francois, who is expecting to give birth in autumn, spends most of the day in a yurt. It's not that she feels bad, but that she's in a period where she wants to do it anyway. Francis runs to the meadow many times a day in search of soft grass. He chewed, softened, brought Francois, fed her, and ran back to the meadow. According to Aruna, this is not a habit of me, probably Francis, thinks about Francois in his own way. He also wants to be near Francois like this. After completing the daily workout and a certain degree of work, she would soon give birth, and he began to spend even nights with her. Suddenly, someone called Diaz. A human dog broke into the yurt. She told Diaz that people who looked like bandits had arrived and brought a lot of me with them. She also said that there were only six of me and it looked like they were very friendly. Aruna told Diaz that he had to go, because Francois said that he had to go after their guests. She also said that anyone who is friends with me will be fine with them, and she agrees with that. In addition, they brought six me's at once, the Lord must personally meet them. They arrive at the plane and Diaz notices the help. Suddenly, Diaz calls Asa and Irai. Aruna asks if those two are Diaz's acquaintances. Asu and Irai ran to Diaz and called him father and brother. Aruna was very surprised when the girl called him father. Diaz said they've both grown up so much, and the most important thing is that they're fine. He asked how everyone else was doing. Irai said that everyone is healthy, runs a store, and has married. Suddenly, a man in the form of a woman ran out of the carriage. Diaz was delighted to see Eric and said that he was with them. Diaz said he looks healthy, so the man is very happy. Diaz asked Eric if he was okay and what was the matter. Me immediately ran to Eric. The man fell down and said he was fine, and then thanked me. Diaz reflected that Francois's recent judgments were correct. All three were very kind-hearted children, although Eric's appearance is a little disturbing. Suddenly, Diaz notices another wagon and sees Uncle Ben, and then said that he was still alive, although the man thought he was already dead. Ben told Diaz not to kill him willfully. He's grown up but he's still stupid. Then Aruna turned to Diaz and said that his uncle was also worried about the man, but more importantly, why the girl called him father. Aruna started to get nervous and talk about how Diaz had a big baby and when he managed to have children and who the mother was in general. Asu asked Diaz who the child was, pointing at Diaz. Aruna shouted that she was Diaz's wife. Asu was surprised and said that no matter how you look at it, the girl is younger than her and this is illegal in the kingdom. Aruna said that she is from the Oni tribe, so she does not know the laws of the kingdom. Asu apologized and said that she had been rude to her, so she asked the girl not to be offended. Aruna said that she was also apologizing because she had accidentally violated the norms of decency, so she apologized. Diaz tried to explain who these children were. Suddenly, Aruna's horn begins to glow. The girl turns around and looks into the distance. Suddenly, a squad of intruders appears. Hugas introduces himself and says that he is disappointed in Diaz and the others. They have all this wealth, and they don't want to share it with others, so thanks to them, they have to fight again. They had killed each other too many times, so he would compromise. He orders Diaz and the others to obey him. The strong have the right to rule the weak, and they must obey him. Aruna replies that she doesn't understand what the man is talking about, and then uses fog magic. Hugas is surprised and says that he does not understand where they have gone. Asu was surprised and asked if they really couldn't see them. Aruna replied that she had used the magic of disguise while there was time she needed to leave. Asu asked if it was really a disguise magic. Asu said they didn't notice they were being followed. She had heard something about Hugas. He used to be a knight of the kingdom, but after his allies betrayed him and he almost died, he became a bandit. In addition, he seems to have a strange ideology. At this time, Huga's assistants said that they could not find them anywhere, so they could go back. 
Fugus said it's hard to be a cowardly weakling. They should not worry, if they give him wealth, then he guarantees security. Suddenly, Hugus is called by Dias. The man says that he is the lord of these lands, so he challenges him to a one-on-one -on -one duel. Hugus is surprised and asks why the hero who saved the country is here. Aruna was next to Dias and told him to keep it up and tell them exactly what she was saying. Dias says that if Hugus defeats him, he will obey the man. However, when he loses, he will submit to Dias. He suggests deciding who is stronger, honestly and fairly. Hugus's assistant says it's a trap. Dias, with a confident face, asks Hugus what is the matter, because he can leave the sword and approach him, or he is afraid of Dias. Hugus says that he does not need a sword, and he suggests to Dias to find out who is stronger. Aruna thought that Hugus had been caught. Although he is a villain, he did not lie about what he said. You can say that he is clean, or rather behaves like a child, or just stupid. Hugas goes to Dias and suggests that he start. A fierce battle begins. Hugas asked Dias why he had so much power because he was the lord of a distant land. Dias told Hugas that he was wrong because no one can live alone, even a strong one. He has friends and family, which is why he can continue to live. The strength of the strong is to protect and feed everyone. Dias says that's why Hugas also needs to work in good faith. He stabs Hugas and throws him away. Hugas's assistants catch him and tell him that they have to leave because they are not his rivals. Asu and Arai shouted that it was great and the enemies were running away. Asu said that she thought it would be, but as expected from her father. Aruna agreed and said that as expected from her husband. The girls smiled. Aruna said that they are all Dias's family, so they need to get along so that everyone can support Dias. Asu agreed. Aruna answered where their mother was because she would like to greet her. The girl replied that their mother was not there because they were orphans. In an ordinary orphanage, the foster parent is called a teacher, but they call him dad as a sign of affection. Aruna says she understood. Asu asked if it wasn't dangerous because what they were going to do if dad lost. Aruna said that then she would have dealt with them. If this is a contest of strength, Dias will not lose to anyone. Irai said that for a long time everyone loved and respected his brother. He was an orphan himself, but he lived a lot, working every day, and his brother was respected by others. Soon orphans gathered under such a brother. Dias joined the efforts of these orphans. Everyone lives by helping each other, they have created a kind of guild of mutual assistance for orphans. Then the brother who became a leader, living off garbage, taught them to read, write and the importance of conscientious work. Aruna said she didn't know Dias could learn to read and write. Asu said that thanks to her brother, the leprosy of orphans began to decrease and the residents of the city began to trust them. Then they started giving them better jobs, and they were able to become decent people. That's the kind of Dias they love and respect as a leader, as a brother, and as a father. So they became a family bound together by special ties. He calls the person next to him Ben. He is Dias's older brother and a former temple minister, wise and strict. He taught him many things as a child. One day he suddenly disappeared, Dias heard from his parents that he was dead, but he did not expect that he was still alive. Achen and Senai asked what Dias's mom and dad were like and if they looked like Dias. Dias replied that they didn't look like him. They were calm and kind. I think it was said that they worked in the temple, carrying out various assignments. Ben replied that they were to blame for not explaining properly to the child, but Dias's parents were the high priests sitting in the first and second of the five seats. They were high priests in the great temple in the east. Everyone was surprised that they were the high priests of the great temple. Aruna asked Dias what kind of temple it was. Dias said there would be a long explanation so they could skip it. One day Saint Daya, who came to the Holy Land with the founding king, met with the gods in the Holy Land and received a source of knowledge from God, as well as several sacred objects. 
Then the founding king used that knowledge and the power of sacred objects to found the country and calm the territories of the kingdom. Saint Daya decided not to serve the king, but to build a temple. Through this temple, you can spread the knowledge of your spiritual father. After the death of Saint Daya, temples were erected in every region of the kingdom. The priests who served in these temples work hard every day to guide people. In addition, in the teachings of Saint Daya, there are absolutely no details about God, what he looks like and what he is. There are also many teachings whose meaning and intentions they do not understand. Ben said that great temples had been erected in the royal capital and in every northern, southern, eastern and western region. They have an influence commensurate with their size. The high priests of one of them, the great temple of the east, were the parents of this fool, as well as his brother and wife. Rai said that when they were talking about the great temple, wasn't it the stronghold of those scoundrels? Ben said he understood why Arai said that. Now the priests have fallen very low. Diaz thinks that, according to his uncle, there was an internal conflict in the temple many years before his birth. Uncle Ben decided to settle the conflict by going to the Holy Land and asking God to teach him. Entrusting the rest to Diaz's parents, he went on a trip to the Holy Land. Then he returned to the kingdom, his brother's family and his wife were no more, and the Path High School was gone too. The temple is completely rotten under the influence of the new school of the way. He thought that at least he would find out about his brother's family, so he gathered some information and finally found out where Diaz was. The only son of the high priests of the old school of the way found himself on the battlefield. He asks Diaz if he knew how he felt when he was told that he was diligently killing people, so he thought he would hit that stupid head at any cost. However, he has such a bride, and it seems that he lives a decent life in his own way, so Ben forgives Diaz. He saw something on the way here that wasn't so bad. Sheep, earwigs and puppies are all part of the Diaz family. If so, then these stupid spouses were happy to return to Earth. He believes that Aruna is having a hard time with such a stupid husband, but he asks her to take care of him because he relies on the girl. Aruna shakes Ben's hand and says that it is mutual, as a wife she is glad to meet her uncle. Ben asked Aruna not to call him so aloof because she could just easily address him. Suddenly, Eric turned to Aruna and asked how Aruna dared to pretend to be his fiancé. His wife is Eric because he married her and that was 20 years ago. Diaz asked Eric what he was talking about. Eric asked Diaz to call him Ire. At that time didn't Diaz tell Ire that he would buy her a ring when she grew up? Diaz says that the conversation is about Ire's birthday. He seems to recall telling Ire that he bought him a ring he liked when he grew up because there was no money at the moment. Ire asks if this means that he is proposing to her. At that moment, Ben turned to Diaz and said that he was a guy. When he met him, he thought he was weird. Diaz said he used to be a more normal boy. Aruna said that this child seems to have the form of a female soul, so maybe he has a female heart. Asu turned to Diaz and said that Senai and Achen are the new little sisters. His fiance is cute, but these kids are cute too. Eric interrupted everyone and told Diaz not to ignore him. Later, somewhere in the village, Hugas worked in the field with his comrades. He told the guys that this was the order of the strongman Diaz, so they had to work in good faith.